Oh, I need the microphone. I call to order the Gladstone City Council meeting for February 14th, 2017 at 6.30 <coughs> p.m. First, I want to say hi to everybody. Happy birthday to Oregon. Happy Valentine's Day. Tonight, we'll be discussing the North Clackamas County Water Commission report and update on the intergovernmental agreement, appointments to the Audit Committee, Clackamas Fire District IGA for the Community Emergency Response Team CERT Program Management, and appointment of the Senior Center Manager. If you'd like agendas, they're on the back table. Jackie, could you please call the roll? Yes, Councillor Sickman. Here. Councillor Neese. Here. Councillor Johnson. Here. Councillor McMahon. Here. Councillor Reisner. Here. Councillor Mercero. Mayor Stemple. Here. Could everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So first, are there any agenda additions or corrections? Uh, Mr. Mayor, or Madam Mayor, I have a couple uh, items that I'd like to, to add to tonight's um, the meeting, you, you should have received the amended agenda, which includes uh, an executive session. Um, and if you want, David can expand on the ORS exceptions that, that uh, we're using on that. For that, yeah, go ahead. If you could, please. Sure. Yeah, it's just to discuss uh, litigation that's been filed or likely to be filed. It's ORS 660 uh, sub 2 sub H. Okay, and then the other two items, one is the uh, selection of the citizen reps to the uh, council rules team. We've, uh, I put in front of you a list of the folks that the uh, council rules group came up with in terms of brainstorming for some potential uh, appointments that the council can consider and um, I'm not sure if the, the rules group is ready but there's certainly a list there that, that they wanted to look at. Is that under business carried forward? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, we also I also sent out some information about looking at uh, some services that uh, Portland State and some other options that we could look at um, for there. So we we can add that under business carried forward as well. Okay. And that's it. All right. Anything else? All right. So the first item on the agenda is business from the audience. And I, I, I kind of want to make a change and I want to run it by all of you guys to see how you feel about it. Where when the people come up and do business from the audience, I would like it if we didn't really comment right then. Instead just give the people their full three minutes and then that gives staff and us the opportunity to maybe think about what their issues were and then maybe respond within a certain amount of time instead of them getting an immediate response. Uh, Mayor, if I might, in uh, the uh, council rules uh, number 4C, it says, in general, council members will not, will not respond to comments made during <coughs> business from the audience agenda time except to ask clarifying questions. Any public requests for council action will be reviewed to staff, will be, sorry, referred to staff for review before being placed on a future agenda. Okay, I just know that there has been some back and forth in the past and I just wanted to confirm with you guys whether it's all right if we just try and not do that. Yeah, I think we should Eric. follow the council rules. Yeah, I Eric. think, that, I think I, it's I pretty agree. consistent with I, I think we should saying. too. Yeah. Okay. All right, so business from the audience. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have Les Poole. Good evening. Good evening. Les Poole, I live obviously in Gladstone. Um, it's good to see you up there, Tammy. I see some faces I've worked with on the Planning Commission. Um, I'm just here uh, making some comments uh, on my own, not representing the Planning Commission, obviously. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to compliment Jim Wynott. Um, I think he's doing a good job in public works. Uh, it seems like things have been more responsive in terms of just getting potholes fixed and things, so 
Um, I, I do think that Jim was a good hire. I haven't had a lot of experience with him, but um, s you know, so far, so good. Um, I've been involved in a lot of uh, land use issues, and I know there's a lot of concerns about what may or may not happen with the property at Webster Road. Uh, we like to call it the Oberson property. Um, at one time it was resolved to be the library site. At one time it was resolved to be a park. But I, I just hope that folks understand that um, uh, we've got a, a, a good, a good cross-section of the community in front of me. We've got some people that, while everyone doesn't agree on everything, I think we have an opportunity to do what's best for the community. Um, and I just hope folks that are concerned about the parks and concerned about the open spaces stay engaged. Um, I, I would caution anyone that gets involved in any of these things that involve property, whether it's Meldrum Bar or, or Gladstone Park, um, there's a lot of restrictions on what can or can't happen with a piece of property. And people get a lot of ideas about what can or can or what's going to happen with a piece of property. And I think it's real important that we have a, a good uh, appraisal of what our parks inventory is, it, you know, where we're at with parks. Um, I'm big on saving trees. I understand development comes. Uh, I understand there's a lot of concern about the trans former trans property. It's clear to me that, that the mandate from Metro that was created, that creates density, that, that exceeds the capacity of the neighborhood to handle it, is problematic. And um, while I'm certainly not opposed to developing property or more apartments, what I'm troubled with is some of the density we're seeing and the lack of foresight that may go into the future of Gladstone. We're not really seeing it here, but I think everyone needs to spend some time in Selwood, but there's a big difference between three-story buildings and five-story buildings with no setbacks and no parking. So I appreciate your time as always. and. Uh, if anyone um, wants to uh, comment on my comments when I'm done, they can any time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mindy Garlington. Hi, Mindy Garlington, um, 7000 Debbie Court in Gladstone. Uh, members of the council, in November of 2015, there was a special election held which included measure 3-471. This measure was asking the voters of Gladstone to approve a city building, a city hall building and police station. The ballot measure also outlined how this was to be paid for and the measure passed. One of the bullet points was the sale of certain properties, so to gain an estimated $3 million. There is no secret that the $3 million was to come from the sale of the Gladstone Nature Park. In November of 2016, measures 3-505 and 3-506 were put before the voters of Gladstone and both passed. In a nutshell, these ballots protected our parks and green spaces from being sold and leased or leased without voter approval. So back to the bullet point on measure 3-471 and the city of Gladstone's shortfall of $3 million. Number one, 3471 was a package deal that included both the police station and the city hall. The city is now short on this project uh, slash ballot measure $3 million. My question to our legal advisor and our city council is this. Can the city of Gladstone, Oregon, legally move forward with this project that the voters approved when, no longer, when it is no longer valid due to the lack of $3 million from the sale of certain properties? If you do plan to move forward, which I would like to see the buildings, don't get me wrong. Where is this $3 million coming from? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Unless... Okay, Bill Osborne. Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, I've had some issues with the library board. 
and meetings. So I did a little looking into it. Uh, resolution 618, Article 5 <coughs> states that meetings may be changed or canceled by the chairman uh, with prior notice to the membership, not the city administrator or council. This did not happen when the city stomped on the board's rights <coughs> back in December by canceling the library board meeting. Ordinance 1409, section 2.25.030, in the last sentence, it also says the board shall establish regular time and place for meetings and shall adopt such rules it deems necessary <coughs> pardon me, uh, to conduct its business. Again, this demonstrates the city's overreaching its authority. The city council also violated the rules when it deliberately did not allow the library board to make recommendations for board members as outlined in the very description of the library board. There was no opportunity to interview applicants, another violation of the city council of its own rules. That's in the, the library board packet on the first page, written in bigger font than the whole rest of it. It's the uh, fourth bullet, bullet point recommending to the city council prospective board members based upon review of a standard application form and possible personal interview as board vacancies occur. Disregard and disrespect for our beer board needs to end. They have been given rights and authority from this very council, <coughs> but you keep, you keep ignoring their rights and requests and fail to consult the advisors that you've appointed. You make appointments that library boards should have consulted, been consulted on, uh, as the rules said you should. Uh, I was also reading through the newspaper article where the city administrator was quoted and saying pretty much like, they just make recommendations. We don't have to listen to them, so why should we listen to them to begin with? It's not word for word, but the meaning I took from that. Another issue we have is liaison duties. Um, as for the li liaison issue, the city attorney said that the mayor does not have the authority to sp suspend <coughs> liaison duty. And I disagree with this. I believe that since there's no wording as to the authority for liaisons, we must look at the authority to the authority to appoint to the boards themselves. It clearly states the mayor will nominate people for board and council will vote on vote to appoint. This authority is clear, and I believe that since liaisons do not have terms listed, that the appointed liaisons served under the previous mayor, and at this point, the new mayor, since the new mayor took office, their terms ended until Mayor Stemple nominates new ones and the council votes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Is there anyone else? All right. Can you just make a comment whenever you want? I mean, I like when he sat down, when he walked up and took this thing to... Do you want to... You come to sit down. Then Denise makes a remark to Kim Sickman. Here we go. Do you want to get a... fill out a yellow card and come up? I just, I, she just made it. She's a counselor. She said, here we go. I'm just making a remark. Is that how you guys listen to the citizens? Here we go again. Is that, is that what you're... I heard you say that. You know you said it. All right. I didn't deny it. Let's, not. Didn't, I know. Let's move forward. Okay, yeah, please. Exactly. All right. Thank you. So, here we go. Before we proceed, I would like to say a few words regarding the City Council. I've been asked not to speak, but I, be, but I feel it's very important that everyone understand our limitations. As we discuss and consider matters, there are laws and rules we have to use as the basis of our decisions. These start at the federal and state level, then filter down to our city's comprehensive plan, city charter, codes, and ordinances. We do not have the luxury of randomly making decisions, but instead have to be consistent and take a path that is defensible. There are many times when we may have strong personal feelings related to a topic. However, we need to set those aside and limit ourselves to the framework our city documents provide. My goal is to keep these meetings respectful, engaging, and on task, and with all of your help, we can do that. And I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy lives to be a part of the process. It's important and you're highly valued. Thank you. So the first item on our agenda is the consent agenda, which is approval of the January 24, 2017 minutes, approval of financial reports, approval of the January check register and bank balances, legal project cost estimate, and department heads monthly reports for January 2017. Is there any discussion? I'd like to pull number four. All right. 
I'd like to pull number four. Make a motion to approve items one, two, three, and five on the consent agenda. I'll second that. <coughs> motion was made by Councilman Kim Sickman, seconded by Councilman Pat McMahon. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Consent agenda items one, two, three, and five. Okay, discussion on item four. Oh. Um, question I have for Mr. Swanson regarding number four is the uh, legal project cost statement. So, uh, since June of last year, uh, who's re reviewed our legal bills? Well, you, you know, if you, you wanted to call me any other time, I would tell you the same thing. Um, I, I look at them. And so you're the, them. you're the only one that... Them, no, I give them to the finance. They also review them. Huh. And uh, there are certain special projects where you got department heads that they look at as well. So it's okay. broke down. Yeah, it's a sort of... Who reviews? just depends on, on the situation. Right. Well, thank you. And the reason I didn't call ahead is generally when I have had questions, they've either gone back to city council or to uh, legal. And so I th thought maybe this would be the simplest way to do it. So appreciate it. Okay, thank you. So Any more well, discussion? Well, actually, I do have one other follow up. Um, on number four, it uh, states that the urban renewal for January was zero, but if you look back on page 3-5, there's um, an urban renewal payment to uh, Dan R. Olson, attorney at law. And uh, so is... <coughs> so for the 5092.50? Right. So I just wanted to bring... Okay, so yeah, I, it, maybe I'll get back to you on that. Uh, okay. I, I kind of, kind of catch me off guard here a little bit, so I want to give you a, a correct answer. So I, I appreciate I'll get that. Back to that. Okay. Thank you. I would uh, make a motion. I move that we approve consent agenda item number four. I'll second. Motion was made by Councilman Steve Johnson and seconded by Councilman Neil Reisner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Next item on the agenda is correspondence. Do we there, have there are none. There are none. All right. So we move on to the regular agenda. Uh, oh. Mayor Stemple? Yes. There was a letter that was left on our desks. Does that fall under correspondence? Just to note that it was there. Yeah, I was wondering if this was something that was being discussed later, or... No, this was just information. I think we, we got this from Linda Cosgrove. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just information. Yeah. Okay. Will this be something that will be posted as part of the minutes for people to see <coughs> later? What's that? The, the... Oh, this information? Yeah. Um, not necessarily. We just share it with the counselor. We don't... Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Okay. So we move on to the regular agenda. Item number six, North Clackamas County Water Commission and CCWC report update on intergovernmental agreement, which is also an IGA. General Manager Dan Bradley and Commissioner Ron Blake. Oh, good evening, Mayor Simple, members of the council, and thank you for putting this on the agenda. I'm sorry I did not rent a tie uh, for tonight. I, uh, so what we'd like to do is, is get this put together within 15 minutes. Um, I got uh, Ron Blake is the chair of the Sunrise Water Authority. He's also a member of the North Clackamas County Commission. I guess I'm here sort of in a dual role as general manager of the Oak Lodge Water Services District and as general manager of the North Clackamas County Water Commission. Uh, we thought it appropriate that Ron give a history since Councillor Johnson and Councillor Sickman are the only ones that have ever actually been to a North Clackamas County Water Commission meeting. I thought it would be helpful for uh, Mr. Blake to give you a brief history of how the whole commission started. Good evening. <coughs> well, could you make sure the microphone's up? Yeah. That better? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, I have been involved with the, star actually I started on the Mount Scott Water District back about 1985. Uh, we then, uh, oh, I told you I was going to do this, my head, every <laughs> once in a while my head quits. <laughs> <laughs> Practice doesn't always work. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, so I'll just read what I wrote down. Uh, <laughs> Prior to 1988, Oak Lodge and Oak Lodge Water District, Happy Valley Water District, purchased surplus water from Clackamas River water. We had uh, we had growing we had a growing customer base without a firm water supply. At this time, we came together to build the North Clackamas County Water Commission plant in 1998. The city of Gladstone began to purchase water from Clackamas River Water about 1983-1984 after the city owned filtration system, there's a rainy water filtration system under the bottom of the Clackamas River, uh, failed as a, as a surplus water com, uh, customer. After attempts to buy into Clackamas water failed, Gladstone approached the North Clackamas County Water Commission uh, for water to buy in, and at this point they, they did buy in. We reached an agreement there, and so that's kind of an overview of where we started and how we got to where we are. Uh, so Dan, I'll hand it back to you. I told you I was going to be quick. <laughs> so I kind of want to walk through the key points of the changes in the environmental intergovernmental agreement, and you should have a handout in your, that I wrote up. I'm sorry I didn't know your staff report format, so I just wrote a, a memo. Uh, the, for the Oak Lodge Water Services, that what triggered this whole thing is that the water district and the sanitary district merged by voter, uh, approval of the voters. And so we are now officially Oak Lodge Water Services. In the IGA, it requires that is a new entity. A new entity entering into the North Clackamas County Commission constitutes a change in the IGA. And that's what started it. The Sunrise Water Authority had I wouldn't call them issues, just things they wanted to change in the IGA while we were doing this. It's not an easy process because with an intergovernmental agreement of this sort, the, the commission has to approve the resolution first, it then goes to the three owners to get their approval before it becomes an official document. Does that make sense? It sounds a little convoluted, but that, that's the way the law works, which is often convoluted, as David will back me on that. <laughs> right, right, yeah, okay, Dave. Uh, some of the things we we tried to consider everybody in this, and so in it, the current board is seven members. There's three from Oak Lodge Water Services, three from Sunrise Water Authority, and one from the City of Gladstone. And it was set up on uh, uh, really based on how much money you paid in to build the the, the commission plant. And we would are proposing to change that to five members two from Oak Lodge Water Services, two from Sunrise Water Authority, and one from Gladstone. And our thinking behind that was it gives the Gladstone representative a chance to lobby two of the other board members if they've got a hot issue. Where with seven, it would make it a lot tougher. And so the <laughs> it's, it's true, Councilor Reisner. No, no, no. I, uh, <laughs> so so that, that, was, that was our thinking behind that. We also, the, it turns out that we always met on the fourth Tuesday. Well, that's a conflict with the Gladstone City Council. And so at the last commission meeting, uh, Councilor Johnson made a motion that we move to a different date, and so we picked the fourth Thursday of the month, and that will be, and that's in the, the amendments to the IGA. Um, the commission, a 190 doesn't really have to follow Oregon budget law because they're an entity. They're not a district, they're not a city, anything else. The, the, the commission will always follow Oregon budget law. Uh, we get audits just like everybody else, and, and that will continue. A big issue that comes out of this is that the current IGA is, was based on 25 million gallons a day capacity. The plant does not have 25 million gallons a day capacity, and all the ownership was based on percentage. So I was there when this whole thing, when Gladstone and Ron Parch came to me back in 2004 about buying, he, he didn't want to retire until he knew the city of Gladstone had a water supply and they weren't a wholesale purchaser. And so I thought I made him a good deal at a buck a gallon, but he bought in with the intent of getting two and a half million gallons a day capacity. But the current IGA is based on percentages. It's 10% for Gladstone. 10% of 20 million gallons a day is 2 million gallons a day. Gladstone has historically gone over the 2.5 million gallons a day. So in the, in the proposed IGA, Oak Lodge Water Services is giving up some of their water rights to make sure that Gladstone is insured that they will always have 2.5 million gallons a day. So the part that I, at least what I understand, is you're concerned about the change in the water rates. 
The current IGA says that we will use the American Water Works Association water rates, rates and manual and charges, which is the M1 manual that's been in existence for probably 60 years. In that, the basis of it is cost of service. In the North Clackamas County Water Commission, what we're proposing is the most basic of cost of services. It is how much water is produced and how much money did it cost to produce them. And you just divide one into the other and that's where you come up with the rates. So in this proposal, in this amended IGA, both Oak Lodge Water Services and the City of Gladstone's rates will increase. Sunrise's water rates will decrease. Sunrise has essentially been subsidizing both Oak Lodge Water Services and the City of Gladstone. This equalizes it to where everybody pays the same rates. And it'll be based on audited numbers. We still have the true up at the end of the year. Uh, I, I can't remember what your check was this year. I think it was around $27,000 or something like that. That at the end we true up to where you get that back. And so that, that's the way it works out. The commission could have changed the rates at any time. We, we, it has the authority to change the rates whenever it happens. So I, I think that's really all I need to say for right now, but I'm certainly glad to answer any questions you may have. So for clarity, I looked at the uh, uh, water production cost summary for September of 2016, and it shows that Gladstone purchased 50.85 million gallons of water during that 30-day period, which works out to an average, if I did my math right, of 1.695 million gallons per day. There may have been some peaks in there, um, and I don't have, I, I literally don't have the reports prior to that, and of course, you know, May, June, July, August, could there could be even more, but it falls off precipitously after that. I mean, we're, in October, we're 38.27, and then November, 37 point, uh, and then uh, 36.99 in December, so I mean, it's obvious that September was a dry month, we used more water. So where is this peak of over 2.5 million gallons a day coming from? Uh, Mayor Stemple, Councillor Johnson, if you'd look at 2015, when we were in the hundreds several days throughout the summer, there, there were times there that you were at 2.7, 2.6, I would say probably half a dozen times. Uh, in 2000 and I can't remember the earlier hot summer, but you went over it a couple of times there. And the way that the, the, the proposed IGA says it, you, and even then, you didn't get penalized for that. You just paid for what you use. This is the exact same thing. You'll pay for what you use. Right, I'm going to do some more math here. So, go, go well, this, Actually, this makes it a whole lot simpler math. So, uh, it, but, but it's all part of the basic. Just, it's really no different than what's there now. It's just taking one little piece of, of the AWWA M1 manual and saying this is strictly cost of service. So you pay for what you get, but everybody pays at the same rate because it costs that's what it costs to get the water, what, what's called the clear well. That's where it's from the clear well it's pumped out to the Oak Lodge Water Services Reservoir, that's where you get your water from. So it's based on what it costs to get the water absolutely finished, chlorinated, ready to drink. So I should probably... Well, this information that Steve has, could you make sure that we all get copies of it? Should I have it? You, it you do, there. yeah, you got it. Yep. It's in the uh, thing as well. So it was emailed out it last it week. It, it may not be fair oh. because this is the last half of the year. We're only talking about September being a big month. But the last six months of 2016, uh, we uh, purchased 266.07 million gallons, which averages out to 44.345 million gallons per month. Now, I haven't gotten the driest part of the year. Maybe it's a little bit more at the beginning, and maybe 2015 is. But, you know, I'm not seeing the, the, that... It maybe it happens once in a while, but I'm not saying that it's a continuous thing where okay. we're going over the two points. Oh, I certainly agree Councilor with you. Johnson, I can even, I did a little bit more math okay. over, <laughs> over the last, uh, today when I was looking at it, and just for the last six months, it's 1.446 million gallons per day on average. So yeah. saying it's 2.5, yes, we do exceed it maybe once in a while, but yeah. I'd be curious to... I, I would say since 2005, you've maybe exceeded it eight times. Okay. That, that's okay. a guess, but it, it doesn't happen very often. I agree. Okay. But my point is, is when you do, you're still paying, I think it calculates out this year at 66 cents a hundred. You're paying 66 cents a hundred, whether it's a, a, in, the, in August or whether it's, whether it's December, you're paying what it costs to get into the clear well. And that's based on the annual cost versus the annual total water produced. I, so I just make a quick comment. Sure. So w when we've talked about this in the past, most recently, we talked about doing a, a rate study. And if, 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 I mean, how much of this could probably get ferreted out if we were to have 
that rate study that would look at all of the the different factors that we're discussing here tonight and and you know come up with some sort of a in other words, we talked about going forward with that. Are we, are we, are we committed to doing that, or is, is, are we still in the going to do it? Well, I, I talked to finance, FCS, Financial Consulting Services, which I yep. believe Gladstone uses. They would use the exact same equation we did. Okay. And he said, if you want to spend $1,000 for us to use the exact same equation you did, we'll gladly take it. So that's why I didn't go ahead with the rate study because it's going to be the exact same thing. And I talked to the, the I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. He, he's in head of, of, of water rates for FCS out of their uh, Basel office. So it, 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 it wouldn't change, Eric. It, it, it'd be yeah, and I'm not, I'm not saying it would change. Or I'm, I, you know, I, I, I think it would be in a format that everyone could understand. And, and because I think what I'm hearing and I've heard in the past, it's, it's all about the rates and the equity and, and how we, how this affects the IGA. And I think if we had uh, a better, better idea how that's that's working out, and if even in, even if we brought in FCS and did sort of a scoping kind of a meeting where we're, where we're bringing forward all these, these questions and in terms of looking at it. Um, I, I think that would get us at least a, an independent opinion about how this, this IGA would affect rates based on making a change from a percentage versus a gallon, you know, a gallon. Well, I, I'm, I'm not going to disagree or argue with you. I, I'm, I'm a tight person <laughs> personally and, and, and professionally. I, I, I'm not sure I see the need in paying m extra money for what they said the way they would handle it. I, I just don't, it's not going to change. It's, it's two numbers. It's arithmetic. So un unless the council really, really wants that, I, I could do it. I actually have authorization to do it. It's, it's not going to change. I guess what I'm saying is that we don't have any information, even what your calculation is in front of us. I don't see any. Oh, I, I, I sent it to you the email. But I just have a question to ask. And with the water situation, and I know we're talking drinking, but also with what's going on with marijuana and what's going to be grown and everything, how much water and various communities are complaining about the water <coughs> and so how is that going to affect what's going to happen with the water system here we're, even though it's we're saying drinking but it's going to take a lot more water and we don't know who's going to grow it or who is it yeah mayor simple councilor niece um i guess for us that's profit because they'll be metered whoever uses it but it also makes our water prices go up no, actually, it would make them go down. <laughs> it would keep them more stable because if they're growing pot up in Oak Lodge, in Jennings Lodge or in Oak Grove, it's they're going to be paying us. It won't affect Gladstone at all. It's, 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 each of us are individually metered. So each of us pay off of our metered water. And so if, 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 you guys, if there's no pot growers here, you're paying whatever your residential customers and commercial customers use. If we've got pot growers in Oak Grove, they're metered. It's off of our master meter. It, it's Oak Grove's revenue. So it, that would not have an effect on it. And we have ample water rights to cover any increases in usage. I'm very confident in that. Does that answer your question? Somewhat. Mm -hmm. I'm still not I, Dan, too, maybe the simpler response to that is we charge them STC fees that pay for capacity, right? Is that mm -hmm. so that if you got a, a new business coming online, they have to pay into it. That's part of what they pay for is capacity. Right. Right. <coughs> An easy way I think that you may look at this, just draw, draw a square, take your piece of paper and that, that's your plant, that's the water treatment plant. Right outside the water treatment plant, draw a bucket, that's the clear well. The water comes from the river, goes through the treatment plant and it ends up in the clear well. Coming out of the clear well is three pipes. One goes to Oak Lodge, one goes to Gladstone, one goes to Sunrise Water Authority. Right outside the clear well on each one of these pipes is a meter. Each one of us has a meter. So each month that meter is read. So they pay for the amount of water they take. We pay for the amount of water we take through that meter and you pay for, for the amount of water you take through your meter. And the water going through that meter is equally, it's got the same price for all three of us under the new IGA. We all three pay exactly the same price, and that's the cost that it takes to get the water out of the river, run it through the treatment plant, and put potable water in your pipe, sending it to you. 
That's basically Central. the thing in a nutshell. The, the exception to that would be up on Valley View Road where we're right. serving Gladstone customers and we're paying a right-of-way fee now. <laughs> Had to get that in. <laughs> I, I couldn't let it go. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> Mayor, I have a yeah. quick couple questions. So what you're asking for is a 54% rate increase to the city of Gladstone. Uh, I did the quick math again today, and though I appreciate um, making it the same for everybody, which I think it should be at some point, is there a potential to do 10% a year increase, or is this, or do you expect at some point just to do the full 54%? I think that's a, certainly an issue that could be stuck to discuss at the commission meeting is is to phase it in. Um, I'm, I'm, I, off the top of my head, I'm, I don't have a problem with that, but but that'll be a board decision at the commission. And, uh, and when I get into the next steps, I'll tell you when the commission meeting is. But do you have more questions, Councillor? Uh, I think that's well. And so, do we have still two and a half million gallons of water rights somewhere? If we were to build a bigger plant or something, is that how I read the uh, intergovernmental agreement oh. that? that we have, the city of Gladstone has 5 million gallons water rights and we gave Sunrise 3.9 of the regular 8.9? All of Gladstone's water rights have been assigned to the North Clackamas County Water Commission, so Gladstone has no water rights anymore. They're all the North Clackamas County Water Commissions and they're listed in the, the amended IGA. So do we have 5 million gallons laying somewhere water rights or is it only the 2.5 yeah, million? You, you only paid for 2.5. Okay. If I might comment on that, I, I think that was whoever whoever negotiated that uh, giving up those water rights was probably not in the best interest of the city because because those those have value and and again that's part of the part of this equation that's why I'm looking at a 54 percent rate increase you know without some sort of a rate study or something that gives it a little bit more. I, I think we we'd be irresponsible if we didn't provide to have a little bit more data to sort of massage this and look at look at you know um, a way of whether this is the equity we're looking for or are there other ways that we can that we can approach this if where, if we don't, where we don't that. see that a 54 percent rate increases, I guess, as well. Yeah. yeah thank you, Mayor. Uh, um, Oak Lodge Water District, when it still existed, had 40 million gallons a day of water rights. We had all the water rights. Gladstone had theirs, but we had 40 million gallons a day. Under the new amended IGA, we have 8.5 million gallons per day. We look at it as a partnership, a regional partnership to where we're all paying, three of us are paying for a facility that individually we could own. Uh, individually, it would cost us a whole lot more to our ratepayers. This way, we're spreading costs from about a $30 million, $30 million facility amongst three of us. And we did it as a partnership. And when Gladstone came to me about this, they had no place to get water. Um, they had just paid off their revenue bonds for the transmission line that went from Clackamas River Water to here. They went to a Clackamas River Water Board meeting thinking that the deal was done, that they were become part owner. They were shot down at that board meeting. We welcomed Gladstone in. They were fully cognizant that they had more water rights than they would ever use. And in today's water climate, if you can't justify through your water management conservation plan that you're going to use that water, we're in a lawsuit right now over that very issue. So put in, trying to assess a dollar amount on what you think those might be worth, in today's water world, it doesn't come up the same. Yes, yes, but. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did have, at one point, 8.9 million gallons a day of water rights. And I we mean, had those, 40. Those, those have value. I mean, we're a smaller city, and, and, and those did have value. I, I realize there's I, some intricacies of yeah. the, the courts and whatnot on whether or not they'd actually let us use them, and I realize there are people who don't think humans drink water. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they drink, but it's not water. But we also paid two and a half million dollars in cash. I mean, yeah. we didn't just walk in and say, "Hi, we're here." Uh, we we paid big money to be did. a part of this. And uh, I want to read the first sentence of the commission assets from the amended agenda, section 3B, which says, "Gladstone shall pay two and a half million dollars in cash for its 10 percent interest in the assets and liabilities of the commission and the entitlement to an allocation of 2.5 million gallons per day of treated water from the commission." Correct. So 
that that it seems somewhat contradictory now that we only have a 20 million gallon per day plant, yes. but uh, it does say that we get two and a half million it, gallons it does. a day. Yeah, and so. it was fully anticipated. I've never ever disputed. And right. the first time we met, I said Gladstone bought two and a half million gallons a day. Uh, yeah, for, forgive me, it's a complex thing. And, it is. And, you know, drinking water is kind of important to us. Um, you know, this is our only source of drinking water. So yes, it is. I think you're going to find, well, we're going to take this very seriously. Uh, and so. as do we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have several questions, um, but I was hoping that somebody else would be asking some of them so I wouldn't uh, be monopolizing. Um, and part of it is I appreciate you saying that I've been there and that doesn't mean I know anything about it, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I have been to board meeting, but uh, there's a lot that I don't know. Um, and that's what I'm hoping that you can help me with, um, help the council with tonight. Um, the rates, why are they different rates now? I have a suspicion, but I'm not sure. It, it, it was an issue of what we considered fairness. Apparently, Sunrise has had issue, and actually, I should let, maybe let Ron Wright answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Go Ron. Pass the mic. <laughs> Pass the buck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. When when the plant was first set up, we negotiated between Oak Lodge and Sunrise Water Authority, <coughs> and Oak Lodge put in a lot of water rates, a lot of water rights, not rates. We put in a lot of cash, and so to kind of equal it out, we took a higher. Uh, we were using we were using more water, so it says okay. Well, if they're using a little more water, uh, we'll we'll pay a little more for the gallon to kind of even them guys out, mm -hmm. so that they can kind of well we've done that. They've kind of re, re they they've recouped, and now it's time to. Everybody that's pulling water out of the plant, it costs the same amount to treat a gallon of water for you as it does for me or for them. So now, it, now it's time to start to, to put it back on an even scale. You start talking about money that you paid into the plant. You can never catch up with us. We've got we've got many millions in there. And I personality. Uh, so you're smaller, you're bigger, you know. So well, yeah, and and as for the amount of water, uh, we know that you're going to take a two a two and a half million. We plan on that, and we know that sometimes you're probably going to go over, and you're going to take some of somebody else's allotment that they're not using, and we don't care about that either. Uh, uh, Sunrise has got a, a contract with uh, Clackamas River Water. If the plant down here gets uh, we're getting up to peak performance. We can pull water out of Clackamas so that you can have your two and a half or 2.7, whatever it takes to that your people pull. And we can pull water, then we pay a higher rate for water from Clackamas so that we can be a good partner with everybody in the plant. Uh, but basically, it's uh, it's a matter of fairness and being equal. Pay, you know, keeping it keeping everybody fair. Uh, keeping it, you know, on an equal on an equal playing field for all the partners. Okay, and and you know that's kind of what I suspected, um, and that kind of is these rates were negotiated, and you talked about the two other partners in it. I assume, and I I wasn't there. Uh, you guys were, and hopefully you can help me. I assume that our water rate was negotiated based on what we was bringing to the table, um, the 8.9 uh, MGD, or the, the permit for 8.9 MGD, the water rights that we turned over to you, um, you know, and however that all worked, I wasn't there for that, but I believe that was probably a negotiated water rate because of what we brought to the table, which give us a different rate than the other two entities. And that's kind of what you explained happened with the first two entities when they formed their partnership. That, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. I do understand that water costs the same. It doesn't matter whether uh, who you're selling it to. But I believe the city of Gladstone negotiated a water rate um, or a percentage of a water rate. That's what it was. 
Okay, it's a percentage of a water rate because of our buy-in and what we brought to the table. Correct. Okay. Our buy-in and what we brought to the table hasn't changed. I mean, our rate should still have the same percentage differential regardless. I mean, if the, if the rate goes up because it costs more to make water, I understand that. But if we brought something to the table that put us at a percentage of the rate here, somebody else didn't bring as much or whatever the negotiated rates were back then, that's, there's no reason to change that. If all the rates need to go up, but if they should still be proportional to the buy-in rate, is my thoughts. Okay, we, we looked at it differently when we did it. Okay, uh, what we looked at is percentage of 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 the, of the value of the commission, and we had it set up. It's, it's currently set up to where you pay everybody pays the same for the base rate, and then you pay for what's called the variable cost: chemicals, and electricity, the summertime when you're using more. And so that's that was the variable part, um, and and I, I guess to make, be perfectly honest, we were interested in getting Gladstone in because as it's another partner, and we all brought a lot of lots of cash, and in Oakologist's case, a lot of water rights, and when we did this, we all agreed we would that all the water rights were going to be placed in there for everyone to use, regardless. It's everybody's pool. Right. Sunrise had put in such, uh, I th as I recall, probably right in the neighborhood of about $25 million. And so we could only justify Gladstone using so much and Oak Lodge Water Services using so much. The rest should just go to Sunrise. And that was part of the uh, of, of agreement before Gladstone came in. So that's why they got originally 15 million gallons a day. And then they got the rest of the Gladstone rights from what they said all that they needed. So it was really based on <laughs> the early negotiations from about 12 years ago, this is what we need. You know, regardless, we 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 contributed, we put in our Andy into the pot to be to play in the game, right. and this is how much we want out if we get the winning hand. And that that's the, the it wasn't a big fancy thing. It was Ron and I sitting in a room, and said, so that's really all there was to it. The and I think I, I think I want to be clear that Gladstone wants to be a good partner in this as well. And they always uh, have been. You know, and I don't think I don't think we want that to change. But the six of us setting up here do represent the Gladstone water users, and we need to make sure that we're protected. Um, a 54 percent rate increase just to make things equal now after X amount of years, well, since 2004, I think it was, um, you know, I don't know that that's in Gladstone's best interest just because we're going to have equal rates, because we did spend our money, we did bring our rights in. Speaking of the water rights, um, in the original agreement with Gladstone, which is kind of where I'm focused, because what happened before us really is all relevant. Um, termination. Um, number 6A, um, Gladstone would be deemed the owner of 3.9 MGD. Gladstone's share of water rights shall include those Clackamas River water rights certified at the time <coughs> of this addendum. So. It looks like under the existing contract, if this terminated, we would still have 3.9 MGD rights, mm -hmm. water rights. And under the new agreement, we will own, you're right, we will own no water rights. We have turned them over to you, but if anything should ever happen right now, we would still have water rights that we could use. As a bargaining chip to go with somebody else to put our own treatment plant. And I'm not saying any of those things are good. What I'm saying is between the agreement we have in place now and the new one we're looking at, we've lost almost 4 million gallon a day in water rights. Eh, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the rest of the council feels, but it's just something that I have an issue that I spotted that I think it's a right we should have, uh, we should be protecting, so we don't end up in that. And I would love to stay a great partner with you guys, and we never have to deal with that clause. 
Uh, but, also. Huh, um, the uh, other thing is, is when we bought in, we bought in as a 10% owner, which equaled 2.5 MGD a day. There's no question about that. When the plant is only producing, and I don't understand why it's not producing 25 MGD a day, but now it's only producing 20. That actually makes us a 12.5% owner in the plant because 25, uh, 2.5 MGD of a total plant is not 10%. Of a total 20, 20 MGD a day, we're actually, we're actually on, in theory, we should be a 12.5% owner, not a 10% owner based on the water uh, that we have available to us. Um, talked about the rates. I see a lot of things in here that are addressing Sunrise. I see very little in here that addresses Gladstone. Um, Sunrise in the new agreement is allowed to build for another 5 MGD plant, which just brings us back up to the original 25 MGD plant that we bought into. Um, it doesn't appear either other party has got that option to do that. Is that a question? Well, I'm just, <laughs> I'm looking at the differences between the two agreements, um, and I would, I would think that all parties would have that right. Uh, as near as I can tell, the plant, I'm, I'm probably not using the right terms. I should have spent more time in class with you to get the right terms. But I'm going to call the plant has 40 MGD rights. Is that? It has actually 25. It has capacity for 25, but I believe... I, I think actually it might have... I, I think we actually when we signed it, it was 30, but if I could kind of okay. uh, make your story sh maybe a little shorter. At the time in 2005, Sunrise, the Happy Valley area was really, really growing. When we wrote the IGA, we anticipated the plant within like a year or two. It, all we have to do is add a fifth membrane cell. That adds the 5 million gallons per day. Well, in 2005, we thought, okay, Sunrise is going to have to have that water. So they were going to put that cell in because we didn't need it. And so then 2008 hit, everything's, I don't know, trash, but stopped. So we had, we had the ability to force Sunrise to put that fifth cell in because we had exceed, exceeded 80% of the plant capacity. And the current IGA says if you exceed 80% of the plant capacity, you have to put in the fifth cell. We knew they were having financial issues. We sent a letter just saying, look, you, d you exceeded 80% of the plant capacity. You are obligated to put in that cell, but we're going to forgo that requirement until you actually need the water. That just seemed like the friendly thing to do. Mm -hmm. Sunrise, is, the area is growing rapidly again. Now they will probably add that fifth cell. If they add that fifth cell, and if Gladstone needs 3 million gallons on a given day, Gladstone gets that 3 million gallons. So it's, it's, but you don't have to do anything extra. You would have access to that. And that was the whole intent of making this to where if some area goes above what they're allotted, they have the ability to do it. I don't foresee Oak Lodge Water Services going over 8 million gallons a day. Uh, even in 2015, in those hot summer days, we peaked out at 6 million gallons a day. So there's two and a half million gallons a day, theoretically, that's sitting there for one of the other other users to use. And that was kind of our whole intent is to make it, you know, we're a partnership, but we're sharing. Right. And that was our whole idea behind the amended IGA to make it simpler from the current IGA to, to make it show that, okay, we're, we're really trying to be partners for all three of the owners. Can, can I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to mention one other thing, and <coughs> Steve, I don't want to. Did you... Steve, I'm sorry. Did you no, 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 please. The, the only thing I, you know, again, we go back to the 54% increase. We just finished the water master plan. It shows where we are lacking greatly in our distribution mm -hmm. system. You know, and 
you know, we're currently looking at, at that rate study to determine that. So just understand, and I agree with what Kim's saying, we want to be partners, but we, we've got, we've got a, a heck of a road ahead of us to try to address all these things. And so if we're looking at just a 54% rate increase just for the treated water, and then additionally we've got issues with our distribution system. I mean, w for example, we've talked about this. Uh, we don't we don't have any telemetry in our in our tanks th to the water plant. That's correct. And you know, for those of you understand what that means, is basically we're really flying blind, uh, so to speak. You guys have a very well run plant. I've talked to the operators several times, but what happens is if we got a tank problem or a that's leaking or a, a water main that's leaking, it's got to be identified by a citizen. Whereas if we had proper t telemetry installed, you know, your guys that run 24-7 or, you know, would have access to it 24-7 would see that and be able to respond to that quicker, you know, combine that with a fire situation because, you know, 50% of your design of a, any water system is based on fire flow or 25%, I mean, it's a big percentage. <coughs> I mean that could be catastrophic for this this community, and it doesn't that particular that particular item doesn't fall very high on our priority list. We've got so many other priorities above that. That's that's how sad this situation is we we're experiencing in our distribution system. So I, I just I just point that out that that's what's going on in I think in all of our minds in terms of okay we got we're looking at this now we got we got the the distribution issues that we. That we that we need to address, and we don't have the growth to to deal with that. And and I can understand other communities that have that growth that can fuel some of the the revenue that it would take to, to offset that. But um, we're not there. We're pretty stuck in terms of the the growth. So I, again, I I go back to and I I apologize. You, you did provide the financial paragraph and in the information that council does have. But I, I just think that they're just, and I, I don't want to keep insisting on it, but I, I think we need to talk a little bit more about where a rate study would have value to both organizations. If you know, And obviously we're not there yet, so I don't, I think that's something that we can, you know, talk later about. So, so it yeah. sounds like that's the big issue right now is the rate schedule yeah. and how that. Water right uh, ownership. So should we just. Well, water right ownership is cast in stone. Yeah. <laughs> All the, all the water rights are owned by the plant. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, but under the agreement now, if the term, if it's terminated, we would get our water rights back the way I'm reading this. You get a portion. 3.9. 3.9 MGD. <coughs> That's assuming there's a termination. I don't know where any of us will. We could go back to Clackamas River Water and pay. The, the one thing, even at, at 66 cents a hundred, you're not going to find the wholesale rates cheaper than that anywhere. I'm, I'm not arguing that fact. I'm just looking at the fact that we've given up all of our ro water rights in the new agreement. Even if it's terminated, we don't get our water rights back. They go to some, they go someplace, but not to us. And ours is the exact same counselor for Oak Lodge Water Services. And <laughs> I would think you would want to protect. I would think you would want to protect your Oak Lodge people as well. We certainly do, but that's, so that's why we want to continue the partnership yeah. the way it's been. Okay, and Counselor, <coughs> you um, we keep talking about 54 percent rate increase, but also it states in here rates will be examined annually and adjusted adjustments made as approval by the board. So if this goes up 54. 54 percent. So, is it every year after that we can continue to expect a rate increase? Uh, uh, Councilor Nice, I would not expect that. The commission has very healthy reserves. We don't have the plant is new in, in relative terms. It's new. Um, we have a, a, about I, I, off the top of my head, if you'll allow me, it's probably around one and a half million dollars set aside. Our biggest expense will be replacement of the sand and the slow sand filters. That probably won't occur for about another seven to eight years. When it does occur, we have the money to pay cash, and that so that should not affect your rates. I would expect very little change in rates. Only the only thing that would change it. There's three employees total. It's about as lean of a plant as you can get. Everything else is operated off-site. The employees are on call. I would not expect any big changes in rates. If it does, it would be like in a penny range. 
Okay. And Oak Lodge Water Services took a cut in their water access to give to Gladstone, so um, to fill, fulfill our allotment. Mm -hmm. And so, how much of a water cut did they take then? Did who take? Oak Lodge. Well, services. we went from uh, I believe it was nine million gallons a day to eight and a half to cover the half million gallons a day. So I think we, we Oak Lodge Water Services would be sitting at eight and a half million gallons a day that we would be able to get. So I would like another comment. Um, your, your, your comment about Happy Valley growing, mm -hmm. um, we were just nailed by the county for wastewater rates to pay for some of that growth. Big increase to a sewer plant that we already own and now we're going to have to pay for again to support Happy Valley and uh, the uh, surrounding areas. So I mean there's, there's, uh, you know, there's some sensitivity to that. Um, I have two, a question and probably a comment. <coughs> Excuse me. We are behind on our water storage, Mr. Wynott, and, um, and in the water master plan there are new water tanks somewhere. Um, if we had those water tanks, could that help to buffer this problem and make sure that in most cases we would not go over our two and a half million gallon allotment? It would help on a peak day or two together, but you know, you get a third or fourth it. Right. I would have to go back and look at those numbers and see if it would help. Okay. Actually, it would help some of those peaks. Okay. My, uh, my final comment, I sense the mayor is eager to move on. Um, I think we've got a pretty good agreement now. Um, this has kind of snuck up on us a little bit. I mean, it had to start with the Oak Lodge water and the name change, and all of a sudden we're looking at a whole new contract. Uh, pretty involved, very complex. In order for the city of Gladstone to be able to give a good answer and to really understand it, we're going to have to invest significant money into staff time um, in order to study that and in legal time uh, in order to get a good answer from our advisors as to whether mm -hmm. these changes are of any benefit to us, helping out our partners and all of that as well. Um, and I'm looking at this and going, I don't see the value proposition to Gladstone. Um, I'd, I'd be happy to help with a name change, I understand that. But the rest of this, I, I think we've got a pretty good deal right now. I'm not real eager to change it, and I'm not sure I'm eager to invest the people's money into the staff time that's going to be required to represent us. So I'd, that's a comment, not a question, I'm sorry. Okay. But that's, I think that's where I, I'm at right now. If, if I may wrap up, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here's the next steps we're looking at. We're looking at taking this to the commission on February 23rd um, for action. What, what happens, happens. Um, then both Sunrise and Oak Lodge will probably act on it. And it'll be up to Gladstone. You've got to have the, all three partners have to agree. So um, if, if it's, you know, if, if, it, if you think it's going to be a prolonged, far, far out thing, um, I, I thought we really crafted a good fair deal for everybody. That's that's that was our intent was to make it a good fair deal, um, and so we'll have to go from there. But it is crucial to us to have an IGA with the name change done. It's very crucial to us. Um, By the tw at the twenty third meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and, and actually adopted by all all three owners by the 23rd. The name, the name change to Oak Lodge Water Services is, is very, very important. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a requirement. Can I make a suggestion, Mr. Bradley? You certainly may. That you have an IGA that is essentially the current IGA and just covers the name change. Maybe then we could have both of those, and, and we could certainly take care of that. I, I don't know what the council thinks, but that would be a fairly easy one to bring back to the council and then have the other one available also for whichever way you want to go with it. But I, I can tell you, Oak Lodge Water Services certainly would not be opposed to that. I can't answer for Sunrise. Sure. There's some, to me, there's some significant changes in here. There are changes. You I, know, agree. I agree. Well, I think some of them are significant, and I don't think it's to the ratepayers of Gladstone's benefit on some of them. And we can have that discussion. I certainly don't want to hold up the name change. Um, you know, like uh, Councillor Johnson suggested, maybe get that part done. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen it. I don't know about staff if they've um, had a chance to give input on to, into the workings of this prior to this past week. Um, the other question I do have, um, 
there's a transmission line that comes from Westland over here that we've discussed and actually uh, you guys capped off on the other side. Um, is there a reason that we're not addressing that in this or is that a separate entity that we... We're <clears throat> what, is, what Councillor Sickman is talking about is the old raw water transmission line from Lake Oswego. The Commission approved connecting it, that, that finished raw water line, or that raw water line to Lake Oswego's finished water line. That will go through, it will connect part of, of Gladstone's transmission line, I think it's an 18 inch, but I can't remember, Jim would know for sure. And that will connect to Webster tanks. And so what we're working, we're finalizing is we're waiting for the IGA from Lake Oswego to assign all of that to the North Clackamas County Water Commission. And there's some of the other water providers in the Clackamas Basin that have some interest in paying back the North Clackamas County Commission for that. I think, as I recall, we paid about $130,000 to have that done. But timing was critical on that, as you recall. Right. It was, yep. it, it, if we'd have waited, we'd have never gotten it. Well, I bel I'm not sure, but I thought uh, Lake Oswego had already signed the rights off on that line to Gladstone. Yeah. They did, but this this changes that they they actually the way the agreement was written is that they would fill the pipe right. and and do away with it. Well, a, a river crossing is extremely valuable, <laughs> and so that's why yeah. the rest of us that are water guys really wanted to hang on to it. So okay. that's why we did what we did. Okay. Well, oh, I understand. I understand why we did what we did. I was just curious if I hadn't heard anything more about it being addressed, and I was under the understanding that we have the rights to that, not like Oswego anymore. Because it will be the commissions. They signed, they signed the rights off to Gladstone Not already. to Gladstone, to the commission. Okay. Okay. To the commission. To commissioners, it's not to Gladstone. That, is that the way I, you want? I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the commission is, you know, basically where all of our water right. assets right. And sort of lie, so that would certainly make sense. But I don't recall the, the I'm not even, I don't recall the transaction. Okay. But I don't want to put Jim on the spot. Can you give us a clarification? Because I think it's kind of both ways. It's not a one way or the other. It's kind of a combination, so. Right. I believe the way it is is just like what Dan was saying. It goes, it's the North Clackamas County Water Commission, which is a little bit of us. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I, I, was, I misunderstood that. Okay, so what Thank would we like to do? Do we want to table this and them come back to us with a different IGA? Do we want to do a rate study? How do we want to proceed? I right. think it was just a discussion item. Yeah, I, okay, I so I that's think all we want to do is just direct them to... I think what Mr. Bradley said is that they're going to bring IGA, maybe a second IGA, one that just changes the, the, the wording in the current IGA, to the next NCCWC meeting on February 23rd. 23rd. Okay. And I will be chairing that meeting. She will. It'll be fun time. <laughs> she will. <laughs> <laughs> so what about a rate study? Do we want to suggest that? Do we want to move forward with it? What do we want to do with that? This is wholesale. This isn't retail. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I tend to agree with Mr. Bradley. I mean, it's based on the cost of producing the water. Um, I, retail I, I don't think we can. I, I think we. Can, it needs to go with another discussion. I, okay. I, I think what we're what we're trying to what I'm trying to suggest is not just purely on a wholesale, but looking at all these other considerations. How do you? How, how could you come up with some options of looking at? at the rates, you know, if, if there's a way you could, I mean, I'm just throwing out an example, if, you, if we bought into a capacity of, of X, if we exceed that capacity, we pay a, diff a differential rate. You know, th those are all kinds of things that we could bring up in a scoping kind of thing. Uh, but obviously right now we have a under misunderstanding about what that rate study is, is and could be, and I, I don't think we're going to be able to hammer that out tonight. So, but I... I, I would wouldn't mind spending some time investing in, in, in doing that. I think that's something that we. But if you don't want to talk about it, well, there's no point in doing that either. So well, no, I, I don't want to talk about it now. So yeah, what would right. council like to do? I would like to see a rate study. <coughs> I would like to wait until after the 23rd and after we get whatever comes out of the NCCWC meeting. Right. Um, I would guess that will be at a council meeting. Uh, we'll see whatever comes out of it at the beginning of March. Okay. That's, that's the next step I would like to see. Okay, so at this point, we're doing nothing. <laughs> we're just waiting till the 23rd, come back with a different IGA, 
that just addresses the name change. And then after that point, we'll talk about the rate structure. Well, I would anticipate they'll probably come back with an IGA like the draft as well. My suggestion was that they have two of them okay. available. Understood. So that I can vote yes on one and who knows on the other one. <laughs> so okay. uh, I just want it very clear for you and for staff what it is we're expecting as the next step. I, I understand. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you, Dan. All right, thank you very much. I didn't mean to be tough on you. <laughs> it was kind of fun. <laughs> I think, I think you it have was, a warped uh, sense of humor then. <laughs> I, think, I think there was somebody that talked about water is for whiskeys for fighting and That's water. Yeah, Mark Twain. Uh, yeah, Mark Twain yeah. Yeah. All right, the that. next item on the agenda is number seven, appointments to the audit committee. <laughs> Hello, Carolyn. Hello. So a month ago I came and, and we, uh, council approved the formation of an audit committee and wanted some um, residents or some local business owners, CPA type folks to be on the committee. Um, we've been on the website twice, we've been in the newsletter once. Um, I have two applications to bring forward and you should have that in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to continue. Um, looking for at least one more if not three more um, I, I do have some deadlines in terms of the RFP and so I, I need to move forward in both ways um, I have two right. names submitted for your consideration we have not generally uh, taken uh, committee members from out of town I don't think I mean the, the one you have here is very well qualified um, it has a business here I understand as well but We've not generally done that in the past, so. So typically, in an audit committee, um, it's it's really common for, you know, CPA types, finance types from around the area, if, especially if they have a business in the in the city. So I know that he's also been on um, boards and and such for the senior center, and so I I actually would really appreciate having that person. All right. Any more questions for Carolyn? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the two applications that we have currently for the audit committee, Dennis McCarthy and Brian Sutton. I'll second. Motion was made by Councillor Meath oh, and seconded by Councillor Reisner. Any further discussion? I'd just like to make a comment. Um, this has been talked about a cup for a couple of years. Um, allowing people from that aren't Gladstone residents being on our committees and boards, and I think it could be a real benefit. Um, we've got some really good business people, some really good minds that we could, and they are affected. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as we go and get in deeper on our boards and committees, I think that that should be a definite discussion about should we have a placeholder, not that they would be re we would require a position from right. that, but a placeholder that would allow for a non-resident that has a commitment such as a business in the city to be involved. Um, so, <coughs> I I think these are both good applicants. I hope we can get some more, some, take a little more load off of you, get a little more diverse opinion. Thank you. So Any more discussion? I don't think that that should be a, a blanket issue. I mean, I think about things like a potential charter committee, uh, budget committee, you know, some of those things right. that really are Gladstone and should be Gladstone right. residents Absolutely. only. So, but the, in this case, we've got somebody who's got a tie to the community and and uh, works here. So, uh, I, I think it's okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, you guys. Next item on the agenda is number eight, Clackamas Fire District IGA, Community Emergency Response Team CERT Program Management. Okay, um, so we got both chiefs coming up here to report on uh, what we think is an outstanding opportunity for the, the city to move forward with our, with our ideas around uh, CERT. We obviously, we talked a lot about this in previous discussions, most recently the uh, strategic plan planning session 
And uh, so I think, again, this, uh, this fits very well with where we were headed in terms of our, our discussions and getting more citizen involvement in the whole emergency response uh, process. So with that, I'll, I don't know who wants to go first. Tom, looks like you're ready to, like I've got ready the to have it. All right. So Tom O'Connor, fire chief, joined by uh, Jeff Jolly, chief of police. And uh, we have the staff report in front of you, which we tried to keep to one page. And the, uh, the IGA uh, that we've crafted sort of back and forth with Clackamas Fire. And I think the obvious question, if I was sitting behind me, is why don't we just do this ourselves? And uh, it's a pretty significant uh, time commitment, and there is an expertise issue as well. Um, uh, department heads, along with, with uh, Jackie and Eric, we, we had a EOC drill on uh, Monday down at the uh, Senior Center. And I would just say that we're putting a lot of energy and effort into the emergency management function of the city right now, which is kind of a separate thing. And then CERT would be would be the citizen involvement piece of all that. Clackamas Fire, uh, Greg Ramirez, who's actually he's a major in the uh, Army National Guard, and he's the emergency manager. That's his full-time job for Clackamas Fire. He, they run five CERT programs in, in areas around us. Uh, it's a great program. I mean, even if we were able to have the time and horsepower and expertise to, to generate and create our own CERT program right from scratch, um, it would have to be regionally connected. And this is simply a, it's a way to do it from the start it's a way to get in on a program that I think is really tremendous. Um, so I would say that the amount that's listed here, the $10,500, is, is certainly, uh, uh, you know, it, it's an expense. But if you're looking at managing 40 to 50 volunteers, creating a program, writing grants, being regionally <coughs> connected, um, I, I, I think this is a great bang for the buck. And if, you know, a few years down the road, we're so good at this, we feel like we can, you know, manage it on our own, um, then, then that's something we can consider. Um, but I think we talked about this at the town hall. We've got interested members of the community. I think it's a real need for us as the city staff is focusing on city emergency management functions uh, that we work with the regional experts and, and be part of that. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions on this or if you have anything for, for Jeff, we'd be happy to answer. So GEMS kind of comes up underneath the CERT program? No, it's, it's a separate thing. So GEMS is, is yeah, Gladstone Emergency Management Support and that group is supporting the emergency management function. So like uh, if, if we get to a full-blown EOC drill, those people would help staff, okay. uh, you know, uh, uh, sheltering, you know, one of, one of the pastors in town is coordinating you know, emergency shelters, things like that. That's emergency management. CERT would simply be if, if the earth shook and we had our CERT volunteers, they would have their packs and their green helmets and, and they would start assessing neighborhoods and depending on the nature of the emergency would start communicating with the emergency operations center as fire and police and public works are, are, are doing their things. So it's, it's an element of it. You'd have a CERT leader at the GEMS meetings. Okay, so they are, they are coordinated. Yeah, because it, okay. it would just be the citizen sort of self-deployment. And, and there's other things as it becomes more, uh, more established and vibrant that we may use CERT for. But I would say CERT programs I've been involved with the p in the past, sometimes CERT you you lose focus on the CERT part because you're doing other things. So if this will make sure that we we start off on the on the right foot. So okay. and we met with uh, with with Greg Ramirez. He came over, met uh, Eric. Got a chance to meet him. There was some military talk at the start of all that, and uh, I think we're <laughs> we're very comfortable uh, with uh, with with his leadership uh, uh, on this to get us going on the right foot. What's that ten thousand five hundred going to cover? That's um, well, quite a bit yeah, because we're not budgeted for that. That is correct. I made sure to point that out. Uh, I always try to do that. Um, well, if you look in the uh, on the IGA itself, um, for th there's some kickoff stuff here. So in the section five of the IGA, team administration, uh, that should be in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, and it uh, provide uh, support new team leaders as they establish the team, which is a big deal. Um, conduct the CERT basic course, training records management, uh, CERT leader meeting coordination, management of CERT training equipment, and there's a lot of stuff, uh, ordering of FEMA training materials, conducting the annual CERT summit, and then if they're, pr if they're putting in for grants, we just be part of that. So the 10500 we did ask how does that figure arrive, and it's really what they consider the staff and administrative time of Clackamas Fire personnel, because it's more than just Greg, um, divided by six. Instead of right now, they divide that function by five for the teams that they have. <coughs> so that's that's what that would cover. 
So how are we going to come up with that additional funding to cover the rest of it? I mean, we've got 4,500 budgeted, sure. but you're asking for 10,500. Well, it, yes. Um, so I, I'm actually going to uh, reverse delegate this one uh, to, uh, uh, it, it's under the, the police budget, which isn't terribly a fair thing, I would, would say, for emergency management as a whole for the city. So if, if, if you've already come up with that idea, how we're going to do that. But in the materials and services budget of the police department, um, there would have to be some, if, if it's not able to be absorbed, uh, we're going to have to uh, shift some money around out of M&S of the whole city to, to cover the 10-5. Just like, you know, we, we hadn't really specifically budgeted for filling the emergency generators of the, you know, of the city, right, at the two locations. So those are that kind of stuff. But I think, uh, would you like to weigh in on this, uh, Eric? Sure. I, I mean, I, I'm looking at Jeff, too. I, I know that we had some discussion about being able to offset that with other M&S uh, costs to be able to, to afford it, but it, it really become, you know, it really is one of those areas that we said, hey, this is what something we need to address. This is something we need to be, as a community, more resilient when it comes to disaster management and, and preparation. Um, I think it's a statistic I heard here not too long ago when it talks about small businesses, for instance, that go through disasters, I think it's it's well over 50% of them actually don't survive a uh, disaster, and 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 so this resiliency affects a lot of different areas other than just being available or having readiness, and and I think what they've off what they're offering us is the ability to do that rather than trying to create it on our own and, and I think this, um, this this sharing I think comes out as an advantage to us but I certainly agree that uh, going forward we'll, we'll want to budget this appropriately at this point you know um, we'll you know we got a few few years a few months left in this fiscal year so I think we can you know proportion it you know uh, accordingly so we're not looking at the entire 10,000 um, you know in and therefore, I think it's it's not going to be quite that big of an impact to our current budget. It's uh, going into the future, so it is it is sort of a commitment going into the future that this is something that we're committed to, and we think this will ultimately result in our community being more resilient to these kinds of uh, these kinds of events. So we we could wait until the next budget year. I mean, from a budgetary standpoint, this this doesn't have to be. You know, we we we've, we've got some budgetary games to play to make it happen. I realize the obvious answer is that the day after tomorrow, the the world could come to an end and we have a massive earthquake. But you know, we've we've gone for a lifetime without having this. Um, I, I guess it's a trade-off, but couldn't we wait until? the next budget year instead of doing this now? Well, of course we could. Um, I think we have uh, Clackamas Fire is geared up and, and ready to go on this and, and, and get things going on March 1st. I would never say that $10,500 is a small amount of money. It's a big amount to all of us, certainly individually. In the grand scheme of the city of, of Gladstone, um, I think we're ready to go on this. I think we have a volunteer base that's ready to go. Um, I. I think we can move forward. I can certainly, I mean, half of that amount, I could, I was looking at my budget today, I could come out of the fire department budget, you know, and, and, and funnel over to the police department. So, Sorry, Chief, somebody had to ask that question. No, it's a great so question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great question. Anytime we have something that's not budgeted for, I think it's a, it's a fair question. And if we were talking, you know, a, a more substantial sum of money, I, you probably would have seen this in the, in the budget document. Um, but uh, with the energy that surrounded this and the fact we've been really talking about it publicly since the town hall, um, I would suggest we we could move forward on it. I I hear what you're saying, but I I have to tell you I mean we've got so many other things going on and and I I get it and it's important that we do this, but I right now I I, I think we need to hold off. I think we need to get it in our budget and make it happen f for the next go around. I just don't think this the timing is good yet. It sounds like you have you have it in the budget, but it's just being pulled from other things that have, that were tentatively allocated in the budget, right? So just pulling from different. Yeah, since it's under pieces. Jeff's department, I'll let him. Jeff. Yeah. So this wasn't something we anticipated. It's community driven. It came out of the town hall, and there is a lot of energy behind it. 
as to the big one or the event where we'll need community resources that are trained up because you realize that our small departments will not be able to serve 11,000 citizens plus instantly so we do need a system like this when we put it in um, we always urge to move obstacles out of the way and push forward with projects and get those rolling and um, it, we do have a challenge at the budget but we think we can overcome it we've had some fortunate we've made some good decisions and uh, realized some savings in some areas that we think we can tighten our belts and frankly like I said this is a citizen driven thing and there's energy behind it so we think it's worthwhile supporting and getting going. And, and let me clarify just a quick calculations uh, so the actual budget impact for this year would be $3,500 if you were to allocate that over a, uh, on a monthly basis the 10 the 10 5 so that's what really what we're looking at um, in terms of the, the shortfall that we're trying to address so the 10 5 isn't need between now and and July or June 30th try to find the language counselor uh, um, well I was just looking at a cost impact it says cost impact is 10 5 for the current fiscal year and it is a budget for you know or would uh, expand you know it, uh, I, I, but I guess my answer to that I don't I don't I can't see it being a, a barrier I mean right. it is it is well, but well I agree uh, one thing I was curious as to um, once we get this going with the 10 5 um, and I know it that we still got a couple of months before we're gonna be talking about the the budget for the next couple of years but just I'm sure you guys have been you know have thrown numbers around what to, to maintain this once we get it up and going what's uh, uh, Clackamas County uh, say it's going to cost the, the fire district sure. to, to kind of maintain it just you know a, a general idea well and that's that's addressed uh, in the IGA mm -hmm. um, that that's the amount that, that, that's figured and then they would if there's cost differential that needs to happen we're going to have to talk about that on an annual basis now there may be a point to, right. it really is dependent on the you know how much horsepower do you have coming out of your volunteers in the CERT program of how much can you take on, how much administrative okay. training management load can you take on in your volunteers? So if that becomes a significant strength of the Gladstone CERT, then maybe we back off on this or, you know, but I just, I just don't know. Okay, so, so, so okay. well, that answers the question. You really haven't thrown any numbers around then. I, I would, okay. Well, I would budget this amount, you know, oh, times okay. two for the, next, for the biennial budget. And then if it's less than that, then, then okay. that's tremendous. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the intent was that uh, to, I guess, to, and, and maybe Eric and I should chat on this a little more. My, my, the re I wrote the staff report that if we approve this, we're going to pay them $10,500 and we're going to push go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way the staff report's sure. written. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's, we only have one team for the city. Is that correct? To start. Right. Yeah. So, would, so is the anticipation to expand? Because, I mean, um, this area uh, west of uh, Oakfield is a little different than, than the east side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's going to have different requirements and probably different uh, needs. So, but th so that's why I'm curious as to how, any thoughts as to how it was going to be organized? Well, plenty of thoughts on that. We, we uh, certainly <laughs> talked about that. And, and, oh, know, I don't mean to get into the... No, the, would, the would you have like a sort of a river road version of CERT? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, high density occupancy, multifamily, and then certain in a different way. But once again, it becomes where's your leadership? Who's <laughs> interested? And and you start with one, you make it great, and then if you can clone that, then then that's great. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. How many people on the team? Depends who wants to sign up. I would think in in a city like ours. I mean, in the city of Canby, we had about 50 people, and they're similar sized cities. But it has to be something that, that is attractive to people, it's well managed, and that they get to do what, you know, obviously we don't want them necessarily to do their core mission, which is deploy after a major disaster. <laughs> um, but if it's a great program, you know, I could see us having 60, 80 people. If it's a program that's limping along, then there'll be a lot of attrition on that. What so. about training? How much training are you anticipating of, of that's going to happen? You know, if, if, if you don't mind, um, actually, uh, uh, Senior Center Director is going through that training right now. And uh, if he's, if Colin, would you, is he still behind me, I hope? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, he's got your back. Um, can I give you the chair and you can speak to that? Sure. Good evening, everybody. 
So what was the question again? I'm sorry. On training, how much? What's the hours and the commitment uh, in the initial certification is 25 hours, which includes live practice and uh, classroom, and that's just your initial. That doesn't incorporate the additional 30 plus hours of um, additional training that they suggest and at sometimes mandate that you have um, commitments as far as team trainings. Um, it's typically one, uh, like one night a week, excuse me, a month uh, commitment by the volunteers. Uh, the team leaders are required to attend a monthly meeting on top of that, so they would be basically required to do um, two meetings per month for the uh, CERT teams at the Clackamas County level through Clackamas Fire. Okay. If I may, one of the benefits of having Colin on board is he's also agreed to be that liaison that represents CERT and reports to GEMS and he has the dual function. Um, Tom O'Connor has driven this team concept instead of just wholly being on the police department to make GEMS uh, shared amongst the department heads and the responsibility for the EOC and working together as a team. So it's not just the police department hoarding it and putting it in a book somewhere that never gets looked at. Uh, we're trying to take this to a more vibrant, realistic level that that will serve a purpose should we find ourselves in time of need. And the CERT component's a very important part of that and Collins graciously agreed to kind of lead that effort. So. I know a lot of people are talking about it. They're very excited so I can see the 60 to 80 people easily. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's something we should move forward on. And also just as a budgetary thing, one way you could also look at it is if we pay the 10500 on March 1st, we're good through half of the fiscal year next year, and you're going to budget 10500 Therefore, we're going to be underspent in the following year, correct? If my budgetary, because we would probably budget for the 10500 we would already have paid for the first six months, so we're only going to spend half of that 5250 So we'd, we'd be under budget one year, we'd be over budget another year. So I don't, I don't see a big... Uh, Actually, Councillor McMahon, I'm looking, I just, I didn't realize we were going to get into the heavy, into the, the compensation aspect. But anyway, if you look at item four under the IGA, 8.3, mm -hmm. payment will consist of 10.5 and will be billed January 1st of each year. So we got, we got a ways to go before they'll, they'll actually uh, bill us. So um, anyway, well, I, I what I'm saying I is I think it's, I think it's, it's, it can be negotiated. We can do a partial payment, maybe get on a July 1 type, you know, like every other government is in terms of the fiscal year oh. payment, so. I think that's something you guys can yeah. figure out. Yeah. We don't need to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, I, we can certainly talk more about that. Um, and I think, as, as department heads, we're certainly, um, and I think Councilor Nisa's point is, is well taken, you know, um, if, if we can move forward on this tonight, that would be great, but I think we can very quickly respond between, between Jeff and I with, with, you know, not, not an official transfer but where where is that money going to come from you know out of our two budgets we can certainly provide that information we can have that conversation over the next week and, and you know it's not magic uh, we always especially as we go into this biennial budget where now we're predicting what our electric bill is going to be in June of 2019 right um, we, we can figure out where that is and provide that information to you guys if that's if that works. Uh, a couple of questions this from everything I'm seeing is to manage the program. Are there costs associated over and above the managing of the program with the actual implementing, training? I mean, are we looking at other costs? And I'm not talking $5 for this or $5 for that, but if they manage the program and they say, okay, here's what you need to do, are we going to be looking at additional large expenses to implement the program. If I may, um, that's covered by grants. Um, I'm okay. assuming you're talking about gear and, and paper and whatnot. All that is managed, going to be managed by Clackamas Fire, um, and that's all incorporated into that cost on the IPA. And anything above and beyond, you're looking at grants, current funding that they already have that would be. So to answer basically, there would be no on top of cost. Okay. 
Okay. Cool. Well, no, no large cost. I'm not going to say, <laughs> I would never say there'd be no unanticipated cost, but the thing about CERT is it's a, it's a federal program um, and, and really we're going to have a professional emergency manager writing grants for six CERT teams instead of five. So I don't anticipate anything large. The only other question I've got is can you assure the council that between the two budgets, you, being this is an unbudgeted fund, between the police and fire budget, you can come up with the 10500 without hurting any other services. The fire, the fire chief can assure you, yes, out of the fire department budget. And the police department, the same. Thank I, you. I have a question. Um, this is 10500 from now till the end of December of 2017, correct? And it's a year. It's a year. It's a year. So the January, so we, we changed everything in the, because the IGA has, has been a moving target because the months have been clicking by. So it was originally written for a January 1, uh, 2017 start date. I think the one date that didn't change was the, the payment date. So I think we're going to, I mean, the intent of this is that we're going to be on the hook for 10-5 to get this going. Right. And then, then it'll be a yearly expense it would contain within a fiscal year. That, that's my next question. Yes. So the yearly expense, so after this year, so we renegotiate. So is it, again, the following year, another 10500 to be a part of this? Yes, the, it's an annual. Yes. So it's an annual. Well, it's an annual, but we have to agree to that. It, it's not an evergreen thing. It's not an automatic renewal thing. We have to agree to the cost and the services back and forth. And I get, you know, when you mentioned that the community is behind this and wants to do it, but also the community also is very cognizant of cost and what we have to pay all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, 10500 and then just to go until the end of the year and then in January 1 it starts all over again and another 10500 I mean, if we get it in the budget, that's one thing. But right now we just don't have it there. All of it. We don't, we, don't have it, we don't have it listed under... A You're going to take it yeah. and cover the cost. So where are you going to cut in your budgets? I have several ideas. I wouldn't commit to one tonight, but within a week I could have you that information. Okay. Um, so Any further discussion? <coughs> Would somebody like to make a motion? Sure. I move that the city execute an intergovernment agreement with Clackamas Fire District Number 1 for Community Emergency Response Team Management Services beginning March 1st, 2017. Second. Motion was made by Councillor Reisner and seconded by Councillor Sickman. Is there any additional discussion? Yes, yes Mayor. Um, I have a great deal of faith in our two chiefs and uh, I uh, will intend to vote yes on this, but it certainly would be my preference that a new program be budgeted and I hope that you guys will consider that when we look at anything in the future. But I, th I think it's a good idea, and I got faith in you, yeah, but that would be my comment, that we, we, need to, we need to be a little more careful on sticking to the budget. Yes, sir, and I, I, I think that I, uh, I feel like a little, I have a little bit more ownership in the budget process this time around. <laughs> and I, too, I, I feel I, it's a great program, and I have nothing against it. It's just that... We need to be more cognizant and pay closer attention and bring it forward. Yes, ma'am. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item on the agenda is number nine, appointment of the senior center manager. No, that's the senior personnel file. Okay. Which one of you has taken that one? I am. I am. Right. So um, you have you have information, um, and I, th I think there was one question I got on this particular uh, item, which was, is there a current favorable uh, personnel evaluation? And the answer is yes. And uh, uh, we've uh, agreed on an offer letter. It's whatever the, the, the it's a senior center salary. Um, scale and it's at step two so basically it's recognizes uh, s the work that he's done for probably I don't know how many months now in, in his interim capacity and even before that 
that uh, I believe in this situation um, having him at the step two is, is a, um, adequate and fair fair way to move forward so any questions for Eric would someone like to make a motion I'll make a motion that we move forward in placing Cullum as senior director I'll second that. Yep, that was manager, not director. Oh, I'm sorry. Manager. Excuse me. I'll still second that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Motion was made by Councillor Neese and seconded by Councillor McMahon. Any further discussion? Yes. As I've mentioned before, I think uh, all of our uh, department heads, uh, when uh, we uh, look to hire someone new, that uh, the position should be open for uh, recruitment. And uh, though I agree that Colin's done a great job, but I feel that uh, we need to set up a process that we don't have and uh, so I can't uh, support the action that we're taking. Any further discussion? I would just like to make a, one, a final comment that there is a process though it may not have been written and the process is that Colin has been acting as the senior center manager for the last six months if not longer and I have dealings with the senior center staff every Tuesday from 10:30 to 12 ish they're overloading me right now I have 16 stops and bud takes up a lot of my time <laughs> uh, but that, uh, in talking with senior center staff uh, they are all very happy with how Colin has acted in the last uh, six months and so I think that's one heck of a process right there that we get on the job experience from him and comments from senior center staff and others that use the senior center. So, all right, any further discussion? Would someone like to make a motion? Oh, the motion's already made. Yes. <coughs> all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One nay. There you go. You get a gavel. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, congratulations. All Welcome right. Welcome aboard. Yeah. For sure. You going to start tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> All right, next item is business carried forward. And per Eric's additions, the first is selection of the citizen reps. And this was for the council rules team. And you'll see that there is one, two, three, four, five, seven people that were thrown out. Not thrown out, but suggested. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so, so I'm not quite sure, Eric, how you want us to do this. Do you want us to just... I th you know, just based discussion? on the discussion, I know there was a clear number one choice amongst the, the committee. Yeah. Um, that was uh, Mr. Milch. Yes. And then, um, as, as you mentioned earlier, these were just kind of the, the list of people that we brainstormed. And then there was also some folks that weren't uh, selected that had applied here uh, um, during our last round of appointments to various boards that we also listed that could potentially be looked at as uh, another another citizen rep. So, okay. so yeah, we'll have discussion, but I'm not quite sure how we right. want yeah, to really do this process. Whether we want to vote on it, write well, it down. How do we want to do this? I'm not sure. Well, I, before we get into that, I was curious as to because we have another committee that's going to be needing citizens also. I don't think they've met yet. No, have they, haven't oh, you haven't yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just for the the rules, council rules. So, question? Yeah, yes. me too. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, have any of these people been contacted? Are these names the committee just come up with, or has somebody contacted <laughs> these people, or have they shared that they had an interest in it? Well, I personally talked to Malachi and Michael, and... Michael said yes, and Malachi said yes. If we would be that, they would be more than happy to. But we just kind of throw a whole bunch of names out there. And and Richard Hoffman would he still be interested? Because I know he was on one of the committees and then withdrew. Right, because he needs. Yeah, it was family issues. Mm -hmm. I I think he probably would, but I haven't talked to him. The only two I talked to are Malachi and Michael. Okay. So. Um, Council rules, my understanding, help me out here, Mr. Doofman, if I get too far off the, the edge, are for the, uh, the uh, um, it's an agreement between council members as to how they're going to operate and interact with one another since we don't work for one another, we're not, we don't report to one another. It's a set of rules primarily for the council. So 
do we need citizens to be part of that? I mean, this is this is something that we're going to agree to as a council and agree to be bound to. But when we got looking at the rules, it really talks a lot also about, I mean, it's not just rules, it's kind of how things work within the uh, within the city that also includes the committees that which you guys are looking at. Well, yeah, I was going to say there's a separate effort on committees, and um, I could see citizen involvement in that. I mean, we're going to be writing some ordinances, and we're going to be talking about committees and commissions and the like, and uh, quite frankly, where possible, I think that should be dropped out of council rules because that really doesn't affect you know, the, the council rules, I'm not sure, affects committees and commissions and boards and that sort of thing. So that's that's my comment. So, well, what we got talking about was the guidebook, which incorporates both. Right. And so this is what we were looking at um, to uh, to update okay, with, well the, with the plan, which we had talked about uh, previously, of including... A couple of citizens. Yeah, the strategic yeah. plan. There's, there's, there's right. a couple of parts to this, and I know it does get confusing. It's quite frankly it's taken me a while to find it, but the council rules are, you know, resolution 1028 at the back of that. And yes, there's right. a lot of tutorial before that that, you know, goes into discussion about the charter and, you know, ordinances and, mm -hmm. you know, all of those things. Right. But I think the binding document is really the city council rules and resolution 1028, which is not that long and I think is pretty specific. I mean, even if you look at other rules, I mean, these are heavily modified Hillsborough rules. Right. I mean, we if you go to the League too. of Oregon Cities and, and look at theirs, I don't think that they talk too much about boards and commissions. Um, you know, West Lynn has a heavily modified version of the League of Oregon City rules. Um, Which we also talked about okay. uh, Good. a couple of days ago. Um, the the intent, uh, Councillor Mercero isn't here, but, uh, and if I misspeak please uh, let me know but his his uh, thought in putting this whole to thing together back um, three four years ago was so that there was one place for all the citizens could go to to you know to get information on um, you know dues of the council mm -hmm. council rules um, committees and uh, you know commissions boards that kind of thing and and that so that you're right the council rules became came part of this and was incorporated that you know uh, it wasn't all lumped together at one meeting night actually most of this was adopted when he was uh, in Hawaii <laughs> back in December 2013 or, or, or September I but it was you know so that's my understanding as to why we were going to have citizens involved in both of them well, on, both, on both subcommittees I, I, again I, I, and I, I, I understand where Councillor Mercer is coming from he and I have chatted about this many times I know he put a lot of work into uh, into the uh, handbook part of it um, but you know we're looking in the uh, the uh, other committee what are we calling roles and responsibilities where a lot of the stuff having to do with committees and commissions and boards is going to be in ordinances so it wouldn't be in this anyway um, if we had council rules that the seven of us agreed to and probably discussed while putting them together, um, I would guess that a, a handbook could be written around that as a separate effort, and maybe that handbook piece could be a citizen involvement issue. Okay, well, so you don't think that the citizens should be a part of have anything to do with our city council rules? Council rules, I think, should be the seven of us specifically. Okay, with no citizen input at all. Yeah, I, I think not. I mean, we're the ones we're, we're going to be putting them together. We're going to agree with each other to be bound by them. Um, so, I mean, with the help of some staff and some legal to make sure that we get the right things in here, uh, I think we would be better off doing this ourselves. I disagree. I think citizens should be involved in every opportunity that we can give them. I think we represent them and they should have some say in how we guide the council. Well, that was my thought also. I agree with the mayor. I think we should. I don't have any problem with having two citizens uh, with their input on this. 
and I thought this was something that we discussed and agreed to during the strategic planning meeting as well. So if there was issues, it should have come up sooner before we went to all the effort of coming up with names and having a meeting. Well, I think that was kind of nebulous, but I mean, it is an opinion that uh, I felt I needed to uh, state. I mean, that, that we, there are six people up here that I, they never always agree with me, usually don't. So, you know, tonight may be one of those times. Okay, so how do we want to proceed with this? Do we want to throw names in a hat? How do we want to do this? Well, I don't, I don't have a problem with citizens being on the committee. I don't have problems with citizens not being on the committee. I can go either way on that. What I do have an issue with is just throwing out names of two people that have been talked to, and we've got a list of, what, maybe 10 or 15 names on here that are possibilities. Um, we could be back here at our next meeting going, well, those two people decided they didn't want to do it because, and we had already said, yeah, those two are the people. Um, I think we need to have a list of people that are interested in doing it. Yeah, if I may, I, you know, I think, um, if, not to put you on the spot, but you're the team lead, I think if yes. you want to go ahead and just call everybody and find well out no if I think if you want to go ahead and pick pick two tonight and 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 then and then you know see if they're they get a vote to proceed ahead with it okay. I really see this really more of an ad hoc group yeah it doesn't have the same kind of yeah, yeah um, that's exactly what this is and I'd like to move forward we've already had our first meeting we have our second meeting scheduled I just don't want to hold this up I agree because I think what <laughs> it's important is if we've committed to doing this um, you know we've had the first meeting, if we're going to have the second meeting, they, they need to be there. Yep. And um, I'm so not saying, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So have they gone ahead and picked the two that they want then? Well, we, 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 that's, uh, we, we brainstormed these so there weren't any kind of, and then we had one that we all agreed to, or, and uh, I think if, if, you know, if you want to pick three and one as an alternate in case somebody says, hey, I don't want to do this, um, I mean, I guess from the from the perspective of the applicants' side of it, they indicated an interest in participating in in city government prior, so we just sort of assumed that they'd be interested in doing something like this and understanding a little better. And I, I agree, there's it's a hodgepodge, and that's why I've suggested that Chad Jacobs come to our first meeting and sort of describe what he thinks is maybe a best practice in terms of how the guidebook works, how the rules work, how how we can do the roles and you know the the piece that that's going to maybe eventually show up in our in our code and uh, so I I think that's going to be very helpful because I think this thing has been addressed in the past as separate kinds of things and there's a lot of overlap and and it causes a lot of confusion but I think I, I guess one of the goals I see coming out of this is just some clarity on how these things all kind of relate to each other mm. so I guess my only other comment would be. Does the council feel that we need to choose these people? We've got several subcommittees of the council working on different things. Is it appropriate for that subcommittee with staff, you know, the committee that's working on it, with some counselors, some staff, to just go ahead and pick the people, reach out to them, and go from there? Well, I, that's... I would be fine with that, except um, Councillor Johnson made a point of making sure that we did bring this back to the council for approval. Okay. That's the only reason that we're we, here. We have we have always appointed. Okay. I mean, and I, I don't think we should stop okay. doing that. Well, and, if and I'm going to make, oh. oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say we also have our shooting for an April. Yeah. Uh, so we need to deadline. So that's why it. we were wanting to to get going. Yeah. To add on. So if you would, I would be more than happy to make recommendations because I know who Tom agreed to and it was kind of pretty much what we all kind of felt right. comfortable with which was Malachi and Michael Milch and then if we need to do an alternate I would recommend Susan Liston who's here and I could directly ask her if she would be an alternate and she's giving me a dirty look. <laughs> 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 so that might mean no but I know she's very detail oriented. Okay, good. So those, that would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. so, need a motion? If somebody could make a motion, I guess that's what oh. we need to do. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, I move that uh, 
we had Malachi, uh, Michael Melt, and uh, Susan Listen as an alternate to uh, the uh, Council Rules Team Meeting Committee, subcommittee. <laughs> I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Michael, Susan, Thank you guys said yes. Thank you. So. Well, the All plus, right. I, as I say, it's, on, it's only for a few months, and it's really, I think, valuable mm -hmm. input that, you know, they see things different than we do. Oh. Okay, the next item on business carried forward is the, I guess, PSU option or the option for um, yeah, communication I, I, training. Uh, so I, the pass out in front of you tonight, if you want to come, I'll go ahead and just kind of summarize where I think we're at. This is another thing that came out of the strategic planning discussion was moving forward with perhaps looking at some outside entity um, you know, providing some assistance with, with city council mm -hmm. uh, interactions and communications. And so the, the, uh, the direction at the meeting was, if you have ideas, let me know. And so I got three ideas that were, uh, were forwarded to me. One was the leadership lab. Um, the other one was actually two different areas uh, that's part of PSU. One is the the solutions, Oregon, excuse me, Oregon consensus, um, and then the last one was actually a part of the Hatfield government, um, the Hatfield uh, government uh, uh, school where they actually uh, provide similar similar services. So uh, those are the three. I sent out an email earlier that today that had a link, obviously has more information, but this kind of gives you an idea kind of from just looking at the home page what, what kinds of things uh, they offer. I, and I don't know, you know, you and I just had a discussion this afternoon, if you want me to continue? Yeah, go okay. for it. Okay. Um, because this is a lot of your ideas, so I don't want to just act like it was. No. Um, but I, I think we agree that it might be a, 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 um, a, a a direction that might not require this amount of effort in terms of looking at, you know, putting this all together. And it has to do with the DISC um, assessment that we all took, staff, city council. As you recall, you know, we're either a D, we're an I, we're an S, we're a C, you know, it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's a very powerful tool. And I think LB did a good job of kind of giving us a, kind of an overview but my experience has been with DISC is um, if you got a certified instructor that you can go way deep, way much deeper into that, that assessment and perhaps spend a half a day or a day, you know, we can investigate this further. But the idea would be to dive a little deeper into that and see how that can, um, I think, give us an idea of, of each of our you know, our personality, our, our communication styles, how we how we receive information, how we give information. I think that's that's a key piece to any kind of a teamwork and leadership that you know. I think that the citizens expect from us, and and um, and and that we all want to want to have going forward. We want to be able to be heard, right? And we want to be able to um, at the same time we want to be able to communicate in a way that we are being heard. So I. Um, I, you know, again, my experience with it, it was kind of fun, you know, it was kind of fun to hear people's perspectives. I learned things that I didn't know in, in the example um, that I'm talking about, and um, I'm thinking, you know, that was, uh, you know, our thought was, okay, could we do something, something like that initially that wouldn't require, you know, kind of a, a, a different uh, approach which would engage with the different options that have been identified. None of these really give, I think, a clear direction for us that I can see. In fact, you made the comment on the Oregon consensus that that's usually more of a done at a macro level and they're usually trying to address something that is, involves several entities on some kind of a regional uh, basis, somewhat like the uh, regional wastewater example that you brought up. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of the mayor's and I, our thoughts. And sorry, I didn't have enough more, enough more time to share that with you prior to tonight. But it was just something that we kind of spitballed uh, this afternoon. 
talking about. You can add to it as well. Well, I think Tammy. we've already done the groundwork. We already we've already taken the test and done the profile, so the information is there. And in talking with LB, it just seems like the next step for that process is for us to actually do the dive, and uh, it it'll help us communicate better by identifying our different personalities and how we can work together instead of fractured. Like I said, the groundwork's already been done. So who would facilitate something like that? LB. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking. We can, we can ask him or, you know, uh, again, there are, There's and I talked people. quickly with Natalie before the meeting, but there are people that are certified mm -hmm. that that have either, they, cert, you know, they, I think LB is actually at a l level where he actually certifies the certifier. So ah. he's, you know, so you know, yeah. definitely, <laughs> yeah, so he's, <laughs> you know, he's, he's at that level. So um, if he, if he isn't available or whatever I'm sure he knows of people because this is a very commonly held um, assessment in lots of uh, lots of different uh, mm -hmm. scenarios I, I mean first time I got exposed to this was uh, Air Force leadership um, I think it's thing, a good so. program. <coughs> then uh, curious since we hear a couple of uh, items ago had, had a you know discussion about uh, finances, uh, about how much is it something like this going to cost us? We don't know. We'll have to come back with the price. Yeah, I guess, we you know, just discussed uh, it, I, right? I'd wanna, the yeah, I mean, I can give you all that information, oh. in the, in it, but I, um, it's, it's a day's worth of, actually the guy that, that, that we did, had do it before, he was kind of, he was kind of an LB kind of guy and said, I, I just want to do this as my sort of uh, commitment to the community and it was kind of a sort of like a, you know, I, I appreciate that you asked me to do this and I felt honored to be able to hmm. come in and assist. So and add it to his resume. Uh, Natalie Smith, 345 West Dartmouth Street. Um, if you know when you're looking at a date or time, I can talk with him tomorrow morning and see if he would like to or if he has a recommendation for you. Because okay. yes, he does certify almost, well, he's even certified people over in China to be able to run this. So. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to know that quickly, okay. but we just wanted to throw it out there because we made a commitment to do something, and so this is just a suggestion. Um, I'll bring it up with him tomorrow morning. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to. So okay, okay, it is a powerful tool. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. it's great. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, that was the first I had heard was tonight of that. Um, I think it could be a very good positive step. Um, but without having that information prior to the meeting, I did go through um, some of those links, not com in depth. Um, but the one thing that you're going to find this hard to believe, Steve. I think I disagree with you <laughs> again. Uh, Big surprise. The Oregon Consensus Project. I I looked, and I think that some of the things you know they bring entities together. We're entities. Um, we're all equals. We don't have, uh, we have the public that's our supervisors, and then we have subordinates as the city manager, judge, and attorney, attorney city attorney's office. Um, you know, but our team here, we are all seven different entities, and I think that would. I think that Oregon consensus is very good for that if we end up going that way. But that was just a comment based on the information that I had prior to five minutes ago. So, so the uh, just to clarify, the Oregon consensus was uh, Clackamas County's recommendation for wastewater when we're talking about governance change for Tri-City and CCSD number one. And this was uh, the county's choice uh, to come in and, and talk about that and see if they couldn't come to some consensus on that issue. The uh, Regional Wastewater Committee ultimately rejected going that direction. But uh, I think from meeting some of the people and hearing them talk, when they get involved in an issue, they're very serious about it. So whether whether we're the right size or not, I don't know. But uh, um, they, they did seem to take it very seriously, the people that I heard speak. Can I make one more comment that just came to mind? Uh -huh. um, because there was a question asked about uh, what it was going to cost. 
I know in last year's budget, um, Eric put a council line item in um, for different expenditures for council. And I don't believe we've probably used all of that, so that might be a good starting place. Okay. Well, do we want to reach out to LB and see what that would cost us and what he thinks that would entail and then maybe get pricing on these others? I, I like the DISC idea just because we've already started the process. Yeah. And I have a lot of confidence in LB. I think that, right. that he could do it well and help us. As many times as I've tried to get him to charge, he won't except for materials. So. But right. last time I told him he needs to start charging. <laughs> So well, or he's and gonna, it keeps it completely impartial. Right. That way he's not beholden to anyone. Mm. Still. Right. Right. Anyway, so what do you yeah. guys think? I would well, just like to see something happen. We kind of committed to that. Well, I like the idea since we already started and if perchance LB's not available, you know, he's got some certified people that uh might be that we could use you know, in the same using the same process. Councillor McMahon, you're shaking your head. Yep, I like LB and we know him well, so I mean that would be a good fit, I think. Do we want to make a motion, or do we just want to? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fine with that. I think I think uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll think about uh, you know putting the a little bit more information together. I, you know, I think timing-wise, it would probably be nice to have it before the budget process. I think that's a mm -hmm. that's a critical time timing uh, piece and uh, so I will we'll take that all into account and, okay. and and get back to you with more information but I think uh, I think it's a good first step and wh where it goes from that you know we can we can determine that in the future as well so okay all right next item on the agenda unless we have any other business carried forward um, you know the only thing I was just going to mention real quickly um, just in times in terms of future scheduling uh, purposes so we got an ex ex uh, a work session coming up on the 28th, and uh, this is going to be the code enforcement revisions that we've been that we also talked about at uh, strategic planning, which was a was a high priority. Also came out of the town meeting. That's our uh, regular scheduled night, isn't it? It's the regular okay. scheduled night, but we're going to try to start at 5:15 um, okay. to give uh, Chief Jolly and his folks enough time to be able to present that information. So I just wanted to give you a, a quick heads up. Um, the other thing I wanted to also mention, we're, we're also going to be bringing the strategic plan to that meeting as well. We had a first, I thought we had a good meeting, first good meeting, and and uh, clarifying some, some areas that we didn't address during the, the plan, but I think it was intended that we, we were. So I, I'll, uh, you'll, you'll, so that's something else that we're, that we're going to, one, one, one example, and I just got to bring this up, is the annexation piece. Um, and so I think that's that's good that we we caught that and are going to address that in the in the final draft. Um, council uh, liaison appointments I got on mine, um, and um, talked about the rental property business license discussion, um, and there's a tow bid contract in policy. So just real briefly, those are, that's it. And then coming up on March 14th is the work session is the wastewater master plan um, so and then Wes will be also here talking about their differential rate decision that they made so just a little highlight of oh boy. Uh, what's coming up and we've already we also plugged in all of our budget meetings as well in, into this uh, into our future schedule so uh, if you have any questions did Andrew with North Clackamas Urban Watershed Council get a hold of you because he's trying to get on the agenda okay not yet. Uh, that does not sound familiar, but, okay. uh, but that would, if he would get a hold of me, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I told him to give you a call. And I just wanted to say, uh, uh, Tom indicated I want to give him uh, an excusal for tonight. He he did let me know that he was not going to be here. So. Yeah, he emailed us, texted Kim and I as well. You have something? Yeah. Um, there was. We need to come up with a review committee for reviewing mm. the firms that have responded to the uh, RFP for the city administrator evaluation. Um, 
Jack, did you want to give us some information on that? Because there's some deadlines. And so Friday the 17th at 4 o'clock is the deadline. Next week, a selection committee is to review the proposals. The selection committee is comprised of the city council, so you guys need to decide who and how many will be on that review committee. And then I can set up the interviews once I know how many have responded. And what was the date again, Jackie? <coughs> The deadline is Friday the 17th. Interviews should take place next week or early of the following week. Okay. All right. Any suggestions? I don't think everybody needs to be on it unless everybody feels strongly. Well, then we I have a like forum issue. Cancel. You get a post meeting? I'd like to be on it. So we should have three people. All right, so Steve, I'll be on it. I will. And Linda. Okay, you snooze, you lose, guys. <laughs> Works for me. All right, so there you have it. Is that okay? You need anything else from us on that one? You know, uh, not th nothing related. I'm obviously I'm arm length on that one. I can't <laughs> comment. But um, the one thing I do want to mention is February 23rd is our next Gladstone downtown revitalization <coughs> project and that's the second open house okay. so I just want to get that on your radar uh, for for future awesome. future meeting purposes starting starting at 530 and going to 730 presentation at 530 and we'll have exhibit boards and pro project staff available until 730 so that's a uh, if you want to get caught up on all that all that's happening in that area that would be a great is that, that here or the senior center this will be, um, I think we've, we've been having those at the Senior Center. Yes, it's at the <coughs> Senior Center. So. It's also the same night as the League of uh, the oh, City's the dinner. Clackamas. The Clackamas City. Well, yeah. Yeah, we, we will we'll reschedule. I'm glad we, we caught that one. Thank you. Okay, so this is a no-go, and you will that reschedule it. Oh, right. wait a second. Oh, so that's the one that's, that's not the one we're doing. No, ours it's is in March. Okay. No, we, we can't reschedule this. All oh, right. Okay, so this is twenty third. Hey guys, I, I was February thinking 23rd. of the. I was thinking you. Yeah, huh. yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. All right. We're, we're going to go. proceed ahead. Sorry. Twenty third. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. So All we're right. Ho we're hosting the one uh, uh, next month then. Yes. March. March. Correct. March. Yeah. Okay. Any additional business carried forward? Nothing. All right. Business from the audience. Do we have anybody else? I do not have anyone else. Okay. Business from the council. Councillor McMahon. Uh, yes, I'm going to beat your dad only because he's not here today. Uh, there is the Valentine's Day <laughs> ceremony uh, coming up this Thursday, 216, starting at about 1130. So if any staff or council would like to join me. Give me that time and date again. 1130 on uh, Thursday. Though today is Valentine's Day, Colin wisely scheduled it for Thursday. Uh, and then two other things I had. I did go to the... Fire Department Awards Ceremony on February 3rd, very nicely run. Uh, it's always good to see the 30-year pins and uh, the awards that are, that are given out. I think that's a, a great thing that's, that the Chief has started. And then also just a two comments for Chief Jolly. Have you worn the helmet yet? Yes, sir. Excellent. We got and a then <laughs> are you are you in the polar plunge as well? Are you participating in the polar plunge <laughs> as well? So you're not raising. <laughs> I gave money <laughs> to Chief Jolly. You gave money. I gave money to Travis, and I, I was going to give it to you because Travis is. Yeah, I'll donate a hundred dollars if you go in. The polar okay. Usually, usually It'll be on the website. Little sauna. Yeah, so the polar plunge and Chief Jolly with his new helmet. I, I hopefully you would wear your new helmet. There we go. Uh, yeah. That's all I have. And, Thank you. Um, good, good music choice at the at the fire. Yeah. Banquet, yeah, go. That was good. Can I say something about that though? I guess I'm old school. I'm an Aerosmith kind of guy. So <laughs> it I, was yeah. either country or what we got, and it was good. I I agree. I get uh, got to attend also, and uh, the uh, the pictures, the video. It's really cool um, seeing a lot of what uh, you guys do, or you know what the guys do, uh, and and now 
hopefully we'll have a couple, you know, some ladies on board uh, through the through the year because you know we you know, the the the, uh, the families don't get to. They just uh, you know, as mentioned that night. Thank them for their their service to let uh, hubbies and now um, or boyfriends, whatever you know, take off and. I guess hubbies are going to have to be staying home here in the future, as they. But cause, uh, if you don't know, we have a couple of uh, ladies that are going to be we in have the academy. Three or two. Three. Two. Two. So, and I want to thank them um, because if it wasn't for um, Chief Yu and, and everybody else, um, we might be doing what's happening, you know, with our neighbors, where uh, uh, boring is being uh, absorbed into Fire District Number One. And uh, we're, that's what makes Gladstone unique is, you know, we're full service. We're, you know, got our own police department. Thanks, Chief Jolly and, and you know, your lady and, and gents. And uh, so thank you guys for keeping us safe 24-7. Um, and uh, um, also uh, Thursday, I, I thought the uh, last week with the traffic, um, Open house was uh, was really great. I, I hope they take to heart what uh, a lot of uh, you said about the different uh, intersections that are a challenge. So, thank you and uh, appreciate you being here on a uh, semi holiday. Happy Valentine's, and uh, let you hopefully get you out of here real soon. I'll stop so that you can get off to your uh, spouses or significant others. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Councilor you. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I have almost a page full of things, so oh I'll try gosh. and go over them Quick. quickly. Uh, oh <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chief uh, O'Connor, that was that was a nice evening. Thank you very much. And and Chief Jolly, I, I hope you're intending to wear more than your new fire hat when you jump in the water. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how many more hundred dollars do we need? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the uh, last uh, library board uh, meeting, a work plan was discussed. Um, I'm hopeful that they will uh, continue to work on one and bring it before the council at some point for discussion. Margaret Bertalan was re-elected as chair and Beverly Chase was elected as treasurer. A, mem a member of the library board has asked if a library and board member can be included in mediation meetings. So I am forwarding that request on something for you to think about, Mr. Doofman. Um, also, was it the Parks Board? Um, they are going to start working on a work plan uh, at their next meeting in March. Uh, we talked about many ideas there. Uh, Kelsey Proctor, right? Yes, was elected as chair, and Mindy Garlington was elected as uh, vice chair. Um, when the Parks Board comes before uh, uh, the council, be, we may get Mindy instead of Kelsey, but uh, somebody will show up from Parks to, to talk about the, uh, the meetings. Um, and Mindy's giving me evil eyes. I can see her from the back. She, I know what she wants me to say. I'm going to say it. So the Parks Board asked me to remind everyone that the survey for the Parks Master Plan is now online. The link can be found on our website. Please check it out. Uh, attendance at Parks Board meetings has been problematic. Uh, last night's was the first one since October that a quorum was present and votes could be made. So, I mean, among other things, we uh, uh, accepted the uh, October minutes. Um, the Parks Board may be making recommendations on this issue uh, in the future if it continues to be an issue. Uh, I was at Meldrum Bar Park today. The new picnic tables look very nice, um, and it looks like those, those are going to work out well. I also walked uh, the new trail segment. That's, that's some pretty looking asphalt, I'll tell you. Nice and smooth and no cracks, um, and I can see where the, uh, the old trail was, pull, was pulled up. At uh, Coffee with a Counselor, I suppose I'm going to steal this one from you, aren't I? Uh, uh, it was brought up that uh, notice is not always being given to applicants of boards and committees when they are not uh, not selected. Uh, we should probably notify everyone one way or the other about that. Um, Linda and I attended the League of Oregon Cities. I'm going to steal everything you're going to yeah, say, aren't you? Are. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I've got more to add on to this. Uh, Linda and I attended the uh, League of Oregon Cities Day at the Capitol last Wednesday. Uh, we heard presentations from the League on uh, PERS reform, recreational immunity, transportation, and many other issues. Uh, after the uh, League meeting in the morning, uh, I went to the Capitol 
and uh, met with uh, Senator Alan Olson and our representative Mark Meek. Uh, I discussed wastewater issues and related problems with ORS 451 with both of them. Both were receptive to introducing legislation that would fix the problems with ORS 451 and allow service district rate payers to govern their own district. It's probably too late to get this, uh, this session to get this introduced and seriously considered. But it is possible that we can get something introduced next year. I will continue to work on this with our neighbors in Oregon City and West Lynn and our staff and report back to the council as I have more information. Finally, on the lighter side, um, I helped uh, Gladstone resident Mavis Hayes find a solution to garbage pickup problems for her 92-year-old mother, Goldie Ricks. <laughs> Ricketts. Apparently, Goldie was having trouble getting the cans to and from the curb. So I contacted Gladstone, Missouri, oh, city too. clerk, <laughs> Ruth Pacino. So maybe other people got it too. Yep. Uh, uh, Ruth understood the problem and promised to find a solution. How in the world they got our email addresses, I don't yeah. know. But looking at the, uh, at the Gladstone, Missouri webpage, email addresses are not readily available. So I had to fill out a form to get to Ruth. Um, and she promised me that uh, she would take care of the problem. So I've been dealt with more, more than just I got Good. that one. Somebody took care so, of that problem. Uh, that's uh, that's all I have. Thank you all for coming, and have a nice evening. Okay, Councillor Neese. Um, no, thank you for coming. <laughs> 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 Councillor Sickman. Uh, I also got that email from Mavis. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I sent an email off to their city manager, and he <laughs> responded back and said it would be taken care of. So <laughs> it's really important on our city web page and everything else that it says Gladstone, Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> and Kim, I would add one more thing. I would looked at the street view of the house this afternoon just out of curiosity because the address was right there. It's a very nice, neat-looking little house in a leafy neighborhood with a long driveway, and at the end of the driveway or two garbage cans. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm. uh, I went to the Clackamas County Planning Commission meeting the other night, um, mostly to see about their work plan. Um, I brought some information back that I shared with Jackie uh, about possibly starting a work. We don't. Ha our planning commission does not have a work plan. They just take applications that are before them. Um, so I've given Jackie some information that I received um, and we'll be working forward with that through Eric um, and probably have something back before the council at some point uh, for approval. Um, keep your eyes on the web page, uh, city web page. Um, we got a lot of things coming up with downtown revitalization, TSPs, all of these things are going to be finished up, I believe, by the end of summer. So over the next few months, you're going to see lots of information coming out, lots of meetings, um, and I can't keep track of where they all are and when they are right now. So unfortunately, I have a calendar that I put them all into. Um, Tammy and I met with Congressman Schrader, and I'm, I'm not going to steal your thunder. No, actually, I kind of assumed that one of you guys would, so <laughs> I crossed it off. Uh, the main thing I wanted to bring out is last year when uh, Eric and Tom and I went, um, I asked about infrastructure, uh, federal funding on infrastructure, water and sewer, and he kind of he was very polite and kind of said, well my cohorts in Washington just don't really seem to think that's a good thing for us to allocate money to. So I went back and I asked pretty much the same question this year. Um, but he actually in his opening statements addressed infrastructure, water and sewer in particular. So there's no promises. I have no idea what they're doing back there. Sometimes I wonder if they do. But at least the subject is not quite as taboo as it was last year. So I thought that was I thought that was a plus. So and I'm sure it had to do with my conversation with him. <laughs> um, the only other thing I've got is I would like to thank all of you for spending your Valentine's evening with us.
that makes us feel really special. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, right. All right. Lastly, um, last Saturday was the Clackamas Confluence Restoration Planting Party. There were so many people that showed up that we were able to dig holes and plant 250 shrubs in an hour and a half. Wow. So we rocked that. It's just watch in about a year and a half, two years, it's going to be gorgeous down there. Um, next is I attended the Clackamas County Coordinating Committee, shortened to be C4, thankfully. Um, the hot topics were the urban and rural reserves and who drives the development potential, which means all the farmland on Stafford area, what are we going to do with it and who gets to control it. And road funding, looks like the next allocation for 2017, we're going to get 205000 so we're going to get a little $6,000 raise. And they're also looking at implementing a $25 local vehicle registration fee, which is on top of the fees that we already pay, to generate more money. That's still in discussion. I don't know where that's going to go. Um, since we all were so appreciative of the Fire Department Awards Banquet, I did a little bit of research, and I discovered that May 4th is International Firefighters Appreciation Day. They actually have a day for that. I wanted to have a Gladstone Firefighter Appreciation Day, and so instead of creating a whole new day, I would like to just adopt that day as Gladstone Firefighter Appreciation Day. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I would like to do that. But And secondly, but no less important, is our police officers and there happens to be an appreciation day for them too and that's January 9th so I would like that to be Gladstone Police Officer Appreciation Day don't know what you guys think about it but I'm throwing it out there <coughs> and lastly I wanted to thank the Gladstone High School Student Senate I don't know if you guys know this but there is a huge problem at our middle school on bullying and our student senate took that head on. They connected with the kids and they put on an anti-bullying assembly. And apparently it was great. The statistics that we've gotten recently from the school district show that there's so many kids that just don't have people to talk to and, and feel safe talking to. So that's what the student senate is doing is they're trying to bridge that and give these kids, kids an avenue. Yes? Paid for by Rotary. Awesome. Thank you, Rotary. Didn't realize it was such a big problem. It's really heartbreaking, but yeah, go Gladstone High School Student Senate. And that's all I have. And happy Valentine's Good Day. Turn. Yeah. Do we have a second? second? Motion. Motion made by Councillor Sickman, seconded by Councillor Reisner. Any further discussion? Just a Clarification. We want to adjourn into. We get an exec session. Oh, we have an executive session. That's right. So, all those in favor of adjourning the regular council meeting? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>